so good morning to all of you and uh, i am uh, mutu uh, suranjana a uh, fellow member of uh, cec lanka and uh, so i will do the introduction sessions on uh, case study uh, december 2022 so today my task is to uh, go through the pre scene from beginning to end and discuss uh, what are the key uh, point to be uh, highlighted for your exam so uh, so after my session i think there are some sessions arranged by ca so those session will more focus on uh, strategic management uh, risk management financial management and auditing part so my task is to go through uh, from beginning to end within the uh, pre scene given i hope uh, so i'm uh, audible to you right uh, hope you can uh, hear me okay right so so first of all i would like to uh, talk about uh, what are the the objective of uh, case study paper so normally the expectation of the examiner is to test your uh, ability to handle a uh, uh, real uh, company issue so as a ca member so when you go to the market whether you are able to so uh, a real company issue therefore what he is doing in the integrated case study is uh, he is going to test your ability to analyze a particular problem related to a company so when you are doing that one uh, there are few uh, important point uh, one is you have to understand this is not a theory paper so at this level uh, we are not uh, testing your theory knowledge she is going to test your applications how good you are at analyzing a particular scenario given so application is the key here so therefore make sure when you are developing answers uh, you are not going to uh, use more theories instead of you are going to uh, talk about the application side so that is one of the important point uh, to be highlighted here then uh, uh i don't want to go through the past papers i am sure that you have done that one and you may have uh, already gone through uh, the new syllabus past papers that mean 2020 past papers and understand uh, so what type of uh, requirement uh, will be tested in the real exam so that is out of my scope uh, so because i have been allocated a limited time uh, so i don't have time on that one so i hope you have already done uh, the required analysis and has uh, worked with those right uh, give me one second i will show you uh, right so now this is simple analysis i have done uh, on the five papers which have been tested in the new syllabus so if you look at about uh, this analysis uh, you can see uh, area like investment appraisal is very important one it has been tested uh, four out of the five times then level of strategies 
then current strategic positions very common one is current strategic position but the growth strategies uh, risk management strategic option evaluation a safe model so finance strategies like debt capital and equity capital strategy recommendations tax corporate governance uh, transfer pricing on uh, transfer pricing tax implication of transfer pricing big data csr bsc so these are some of the key areas uh, examiner has tested so therefore it's your duty to analyze these uh, things uh, and uh, so prepare for uh, the requirement so in that scenario you have to give more weight on uh, the key areas tested in the exams right right uh, if i show you uh, uh, some of the past papers uh, tested uh, in the exam now this is the last time paper so now if you look at about this uh, paper now see the requirement here so assume you are the business development manager then write a report to be submitted to the special board meeting that is to be held later today assessing the risk of each course of actions where necessary now here so what is the requirement is uh, so write a report so one consolidated report so think about the real environments close your eyes and think uh, the real environment you are uh, you are in so then so in that scenario how we are going to write a report so think about the practical uh, uh, the work applications uh, so in your office how we are going to submit report so similar to that so so report should have a executive summary like that so you have to develop a nice report here then so he has given a guideline how the 80 marks are uh, allocated so he has given a guideline uh, on uh, how uh, 80 marks are allocated. Uh, if you look at about uh, this, uh, now see, so within your report, you have to include these points. The first one is uh, current strategic uh, evaluations, current strategic position evaluations. So that carry normally uh, five marks, right? So now, so you have to look at about the time allocation also so five months mean maximum you can take eight to ten minutes so if you write so many stuffs then uh, you will lose your time but ultimately you will get maximum uh, marks of five marks that's not sufficient right so here you can see this uh, recommendation responsible exit 10 marks uh, then discussion on strategic significance of the withdrawal from the reside board and recommendation there of considering the required requirement purpose better alternatives evaluation recommendation on the offer by im club hotel 20 so the evaluation part then evaluation recommendation on the offer by synergy 20 marks so in there you have to do both qualitative and quantitative analysis so for example investment appraisal can be used as a quantitative analysis at the same time, you have to look at about the qualitative factors also. Uh, possibly, uh, right? Yeah, you can look at about uh, you can use the uh, SAF model and do these evaluations. Then other issues uh, you have to look at about governance, CSR. Uh, then uh, this uh, B, uh, BC also a little bit tested non-financial perspectives. Then for the professional presentation, it has uh, allocated five marks. So you have to carefully look at about uh, these requirements and accordingly you have to develop your answer. Right? Right. Now, with pre scene what you can do? Right? With, with pre scene what you can do? I will show you uh, what I have done uh, uh, last time uh, for the strategic management part. This is only for the strategic management part. Uh, so normally, what is your jobs? Right. So now, based on the pre scene, uh, you have to think what are the different analysis you can conduct. Then uh, you have to do that. 
because these are open book exam so that's a luxury of this so when examiners say open books uh, you have the luxury of uh, right uh, bringing any notes you can go to the exam hall with uh, any notes no restrictions so now your duty is to understand uh, the facts given and do whatever the analysis you can do with the precincts now see uh, this is only for strategic management part right so look at the analysis i have done here so i have done 101 uh, analysis so we have to uh, apply different different theories you have learned uh, in strategic management financial management risk management taxations and do the analysis right so today in my today's discussions i will try to identify some of the uh, the analysis you can do so that will be my uh, one of the key object tools right then after that uh, your job is to uh, do uh, whatever the analysis you can uh, do with the uh, precincts right maybe you can work with some of the group members right or if you are uh, right uh, going to some classes uh, your lecturers also may help you on uh, these stops and uh, so work hard uh, and get a more understanding through these analysis that is one of the tasks of you right right now uh, as an introductory part so what are the key analysis you can do with the case study to get an understanding so i am suggesting you to do uh, three main analysis to get understanding about the main facts of the case study the number one analysis you have to do is always the sort analysis when you start your analysis with the sort, the sort will uh, summarize uh, the internal environment uh, and the external environment. The key point of the internal environment and the external environment can be analyzed through the sort. Therefore, I am recommending you to start your analysis with the sort analysis. So, this is the number one. Number two, you can do a pest analysis. You can analyze the macro environment factors by using the fester. In the number three, I am suggesting you to conduct the uh, five versus analysis. Five versus analysis. At the number three analysis, I am recommending you. So through here, actually, there are two main industries given. Uh, one is uh, uh, plantation industry so they are in the tea plantation industry the second one is the uh, hospital industry so you can analyze both industries hospital and the plantations and you can make a conclusion sir, whether the industry is attractive or no not through the five process analysis so these are the the first three uh, analysis i am recommending for you to do right uh, so with that uh, introductions, uh, I'm going to look at about the facts given in the uh, the pre scene. So only the uh, only the we are health and tea. So that's the topic. So Paprian uh, uh, Agro uh, is the company name. Uh, and it was uh, established in uh, 1962. Uh, since 1962, the company exit. So, so first of all, we look at about the the Pasphara and try to understand what type of business they are in. Normally, in a, in any case study, uh, the the pers few paragraphs are located to give an induction about the company. So here also the same thing can be identified. Right? They have given some introduction about the company. So 
Dr. Olivia Paprians earned her bachelor's degree in medicine in 1989. Since then, she served actively in several public hospitals for over 10 years. She's a doctor, no? Right. Uh, she's a doctor and served in uh, public hospitals for more than 10 years. Uh, Olivia worked in a few private clinic in her early career. Uh, in addition to working in government hospitals, she has uh, worked in some private clinic also, uh, similar to what other doctors do in her early career and enjoy life by helping people and society. Enjoy life by helping people and society. So this is a very important point. Why I am saying this is an important point. Uh, so that tell about the character of the Olivia. So she is uh, always happy to uh, help people and to the society. Someone uh, who is more socially conscious persons want to help to the society. The individualism is not dominating and the collectivism is dominating in her uh, philosophy. So very important one. So, so for example, uh, when you are going to analyze the leadership style uh, of the Olivia, uh, you have to consider these particular facts. Right. Meanwhile, she had to help her father in managing the family owned tea company. Uh, look at now, I uh, want to uh, create the background. Even though she is a doctor, at the same time, she helped uh, her father also. Uh, the father is having a family owned tea company. The company name is uh, Paprian and Crew, uh, uh, is the company name. So, that is the company. The case uh, is focus. Olivia was happy to spend more time at plantations as she did in her childhood. Look at, so she's always happy to uh, spend time in plantations. So when she was a child also, she had a similar behavior and changed her life direction little by little, moving away from medical practice, right? Uh, now he want to, she want to change her uh, professions also to little bit. So at the moment she is practicing medicine, but now she want to more involved in the plantations. Her interest and attention were on managing her father Olivia's tea factories. Uh, Olivia's leadership and tea chapter commence. Uh, now she has involved with the company. The company manages 60 estate currently. So the company owns 60 estate. Now, so that the introductions about uh, her and the company relationships. Right. Uh, this uh, Oliver Fabrians uh, uh, is the founder, no? Chairman of Fabrian uh, Agro, uh, Oliver's leadership and key chapter comes. The father is the Oliver Fabrian. Then after the father, she started to manage the company. Now, if you look at the information given here carefully. So we don't want to think about father much here. That's just only for the information. Father commits the business, but so the case is not focusing about his leadership or his tenature. Case is focusing on the uh, the leadership of uh, Olivia uh, Paprian and uh, the strategy she has used during her tenure. Still, she's in the business. That is one aspect. So father uh, is no more there in the business. We can assume like that. So we focused on uh, the daughter, the Dr. Olivia Paprian. So that is one area uh, in the case, right? Now, now what happened? Uh, the next things uh, what the examiner is going to do is uh, she is going to he is going to at the second part of this uh, case study. So want to talk about her husband also. Want to talk about her husband also. Now, see, Dr. Devendra Mohottala, uh, he is also a doctor. Dr. Devendra Mohottala, Olivia's husband, right? So, normally doctors marry another doctor, no? So, funny, like accountant marry another accountant. 
right so similar story she has uh, married a doctor dr devinder uh, mohotala solivia's husband uh, was a medical officer in a national hospital so he is a medical officer in a national hospital and became a specialist in uh, uh, forensic toxicology in 2006 so now different area so forensic uh, toxicology right uh, is the area uh, her husband has specialized now see now olivia is there now the olivia's husband is is there now he is going to talk about the the son also the elder son ronald uh, roland mortal worked with the uk research team uh, reading for a bachelor's degree now the case talk about three generations right It's the first generation who commence the business that is uh, oliver fabrians then the second generation uh, olivia uh, fabrians right then the third generation also uh, enter into the business that is uh, uh, that is uh, roland uh, mortal is the third generation so possibly within the unseen uh, there will be more information about the roland mortal right so uh, so i feel like that maybe a, a different role change uh, right more information about the uh, roland mortal uh, in addition to that one they, they may have some other uh, sons and daughter also uh, now that's why especially say elder son Roland Mohotan, right? So the others may also uh, I will see whether they are in the already in the business or sometimes they are not already in the business. So with the unseen, uh, that part will also be added. So some more information will be given. For example, you say uh, uh, Olivia uh, want to retire from the business now, right? Uh, and want to uh, work more with social activities. Uh, want to spend more time with the social activities uh, therefore she invited uh, her uh, will say daughter also to uh, join with the business and daughter became the ceo then the elder son became the chairman like that there may be some uh, unseen story come uh, right so now they are talking about the role and mortal also elder sons Uh, with a UK researcher, we work with a UK research team uh, reading for a bachelor's degree. Then, so currently, Raven is a charm on top. Uh, they we are own hospital private unit. Ah, look at look at now. So they are now the three persons are mainly focus: Olivia, Raven, and the Rona. Now they are going to give information about Raven also. right now up to now we know that olivia is managing this uh, plantation company now they say devind uh, is the chairman of devia rolon hospital private limited so he is the chairman of devia rolon hospital private limited uh, so drh in colombo uh, her healthcare service provider love by people right uh so if read love by people as the hospital charges are relatively low uh he is managing a hospital which is located in colombo area and people prefer to go to this hospital the key factor is the charges are relatively low so if you look at about the strategy part right you can connect the the theoretical knowledge you have learned in the classroom with this now see these people often refer to drh as the budget hospital uh this is a budget hospital like right? budget means a very low cost hospital so if you go to the theory part you have learned for example uh, michael fortos generic strategies uh, or uh, bowman strategy clock uh, we can relate with this uh, information so we can relate with this information uh, right 
So, uh, so while I'm uh, going through the uh, pre-seen information, so I will try to connect with the respective theory area also. Right. Uh, so what I have told you is here they, they talk about the hospital and little bit about their uh, strategy also, hospital strategy also. Right. If you uh, look at about that part, uh, theory part, so we can connect with the Porter's generic strategies. We all know Porter has uh, uh, introduced three theories uh, that uh, every organization can use uh, commonly, irrespective of the industry they are in. Uh, what are the three theories? Uh, one is cost leaderships. Then uh, the second one is differentiation. Third one is focus. So actually two broad market-based strategies and one uh, niche-based strategies. Selected marketplace, no? Now, if you look at about the information given here, so if we apply the theory part here, so this is the focus strategy. They are located in the Colombo area at the same time the market is budget hospital, right? So this is a focus strategy. This is not a broad uh, strategy. They are not operating all uh, uh, over the country. So they are uh, applying the focus, uh, cost focus or differentiation focus. If you look at about the, uh, the scenario given, it clearly say it's a budget hospital and the charges are relatively low. So that means, uh, so they are applying the, uh, the cost focus strategy. So within the selected marketplace, uh, they offer uh, the product at the lowest price. So focus is the strategy, right? Right. So there is a budget hospital. Draven has thought about strategies for grabbing new opportunities. Uh, rapid new opportunities at the healthcare service sector is an inflection point going through an era of service utilizations. Uh, it shows some similarities to the industrial revolution in manufacturing that started in the 18th century. Rapidly improving technologies like now he want to apply some new technologies, mobile, uh, cloud, big data, uh, biometrics and humanize uh, machines will bring opportunities uh, for a wide range of uh, new and advanced solution change in the service industries. That's an interesting area. So he want to apply some of the newest technology in the market. This industry 4.0 technologies. Right, some of the example are also given. So that, uh, that's a hint for you so examiner can uh, test the knowledge in these areas, right? Examiner can test the knowledge in these areas. Uh, uh, right, so strategy clock, if you look at the strategy clock, uh, the, what is the strategy actually, previous one? There should be no build strategy, you know? There should be no build, right? So this is the strategy, no build, right? Right. So I, I'm not going to talk much on this one, right? That's a theory part. So industry 4.0, look at the industry 4.0, right? So India, what we are trying to do? So India, we are trying to uh, have end-to-end -end digitalizations. So we try to connect the things together. The entire value chain will be connected together uh, from raw material to end customer through industry 4.0 technologies. This is some of the example for uh, industry 4.0 technologies, right? Uh, like uh, mobile devices, cloud computing, IoT platforms, location detection technologies, 
right? Big data. So now if you look at the facts given in the case, he's talking about some of the stuff it's like mobile technology, cloud technology, big data, biometrics and humanized machines, right? So therefore you should have an idea on these areas, right? So I will look at a few stuffs only. So mobile devices, he's talking about the mobile devices. Now, so what is the biggest change we expected in mobile uh, communications? Is the uh, application of the 5G, you know? So people think that uh, the 5G will change the whole world. Especially it will allow uh, to have more video streaming at a very, very fast rate. So he's talking about the mobile uh, applications. So how we can use these technologies uh, at the hospital. So we have to carefully go for a detailed analysis of this. And here yeah, that can be tested in the exam, right? Then cloud computing is uh, another aspect. That is something which is already happening in the industry. Uh, we know that uh, so normally under the cloud computing, so instead of having our own uh, right, uh, assets, uh, right, uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the uh, things on rent basis. So you know, normally this uh, cloud computing can be uh, applicable uh, at uh, three levels. Three levels, uh, what are the three applicable level? Uh, one is uh, infrastructure as a service. The another one is uh, platform as a service. Then uh, another one is software as a service. So under the infrastructure as a service, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, we are focusing on the hardware side. Hardware side, instead of uh, purchasing the computer hardware uh, by the company, we are trying to get the same on a rent basis. For example, servers. So normally is the price of the servers are very high. You now these days, sometimes it's a four to five million. So investment value. So why you want to uh, right, spend your money on uh, that? So instead of uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, uh, get them on a rent basis. Right? The other one is the software similar stuff. So instead of buying the software, so we are going to purchase them uh, on a rent basis, right? Uh, we are trying to get them on a rent basis instead of purchasing them. Now, for example, Microsoft Office already, you may use this uh, cloud-based uh, office applications. Uh, then another one is platform as a service. So in there, again, uh, without creating our own development environment, uh, they are going to uh, do this development work in a third party environment. Uh, this, uh, the software development companies know these things. Now, in any organizing, large organizations, the development should uh, take place on a continuous basis. To do this uh, different software development, you need to have uh, uh, the required environment. So, a lot of things are required. There are different development tools, servers, a lot of things are required. Uh, now, without developing the same internally, what we are going to do is we are going to have the same uh, uh, things. Uh, we are going to get the same thing from a third party. That is platform as a service. So normally there are three types of uh, cloud computing deployment models, uh, private cloud, uh, public cloud, and the hybrid cloud. Uh, private cloud, public cloud, and the hybrid cloud. Uh, in the private cloud, uh, uh, what happened is uh, totally allocated cloud service is given to us. So the third party give uh, a facility which is exclusively allocated for us. No the other party will use that. This is uh, normally costly one. Prices are very high. Then public cloud, uh, if you look at the public cloud in there, uh, we are going to use uh, the public uh, uh, the crowd. Cloud facility given by third party, uh, and not only us, there are some other party also use the same. 
Right. The price is uh, relatively low in here. Hybrid cloud means uh, we have both facilities, uh, private cloud and the public cloud. So when the private cloud capacity is not sufficient, then we move to the hybrid cloud. Right. right. So I'm not going to talk much on these uh, theory stuffs. Right. So, right. Uh, so it's up to you to go through uh, uh, details, uh, analysis on this and get the required knowledge on that right uh, then another one uh, i think some can focus is about the big data so very popular term these days uh, the big data so so what you have to do is uh, right uh, under the big data so uh, if i just simple come very big data so uh, sometimes people think this is a buzzword no Right. Uh, so very simply, uh, the big data is uh, mean uh, not like uh, early days. Uh, nowadays, we have a lot of data. So this data like, uh, right, uh, this data is very important because uh, we can do a lot of analysis and uh, identify some of the key insight from that. And those uh, analyze information can be used for uh, decision making, better decision making, and even we can get a competitive advantage through that. So, a lot of structural and non-structural data is available. So, for example, Google have a lot of data on you. So, Google can sell uh, your information to someone else uh, and uh, right uh, uh, earn a Facebook another one. So, these are connected with your life, no? So a lot of uh, structural and structural data are there. Even uh, older days, uh, we didn't have the, the internal capacity to store the customer transactions for a longer period. So we had a manual record. Now no need to uh, worry on that. Uh, we can electronically uh, keep a lot of customer information. Now, so that's a uh, very structural data actually. So these can, data can be used for different different purposes. Right. Uh, so normally there are some important features of the big data, volume, velocity and variety. Volume means uh, so there are large amount of data is available. Then uh, velocity is mean uh, so you can get information at very quick rate. Variety means uh, uh, so there may be different type of data so available. Right. Then uh, the fourth uh, uh, variable is veracity. So how much uh, the information is uh, uh, true, whether you can rely on that one. Those are the four characteristics of the big data. The key point here is the big data analytics actually. Big data analytics. Uh, now when you have large amount of data, you have to analyze those data and you want to identify the key points. For an example, uh, you can analyze a particular customer can, uh, and identify how how many uh, transactions he has done during the last one year period? So what are the, the most favorable items of him for purchasing? Those information can be later used for getting some uh, competitive advantage. For example, you can uh, conduct a sales promotion covering the item the customer more preferably purchase, right? So big data. Uh, analytics uh, will play an important role in this uh, particular case study. Uh, so, uh, the value of big data. Uh, one important is, uh, is the transparency. Right? So, when you have, uh, make sure that these uh, key information are available for uh, different stakeholders. Uh, so, that will be helpful for them. Then you can improve the performance. Right. So then uh, you can do a segmentation and customizations. You can identify a specific segment and then you can make decisions. Uh, for example, inventory levels uh, based on the customer requirement, you can reduce new product and services. Those are the key point uh, of the value of the big data. Right. Right. So you have to do a detailed analysis on that. It's up to you. Right you have 20 days now for the exam so you have enough time i hope that you have already done 
these channels is also right right then uh, so that about the induction part uh, give me one second Right. Uh, so this is the introductions part actually. So we uh, identify uh, the key point given. So through the introduction para. Right. Any questions? Do we have any questions from the introductions given? Right, then uh, we'll move to the next one. This is the story. Now, actually, if you look at about this information uh, about the tea industry, uh, little uh, value from the exam point of I think. Uh, so he want to give some in, uh, information about the tea industry in Sri Lanka. So, the this information can be used for you to do a industry analysis and the only uh, the main thing you can do with this information of uh, the five process where you can construct the five process uh, based on the information given here right so we'll uh, look at about the story hello, hello sir yeah uh, hello sir uh, i have one question here then um, the uh, it says uh, that they are going, they are focusing on um, industry for technologies. Uh, yeah. And meanwhile, they are having a strategy of cost focused in uh, strategy. Then, how relevant uh, they are to be in the same strategy for investing uh, this much? Uh, because we have to invest a lot uh, implementing this industry for technologies. Then are they going to differentiation strategy and what is their focus on this? Yeah, so, so if I ask a question from you, so what is the main purpose of applied technology? What is the key benefit you can get? Uh, technology that, that mean uh, the cost savings. Cost, yeah, savings. cost saving, but the loan yeah. run also. Yeah, cost saving is the main benefit you can get. Therefore, I don't think that their strategy will be affected. Even they can move to a uh, right, more hybrid-based strategy through that one. So while you are reducing the cost, you uh, ex uh, you give the experience of differentiation also to the customer. The uniqueness part is also a little bit increased. So they can go for more hybrid uh, type of strategy. And that will be ideal strategy to complete uh, in an industry like this. So they can easily get a competitive advantage through that. Yeah, that means uh, not only the cost focus or differentiation, either one or hybrid. Yeah, yeah they, they, they have a lot of options uh, investing uh, on these. No, then competitive industry, they are having uh, those kind of advantages. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sir. Right. Then uh, if you move to that. Uh, the T story part, uh, so history, if you look at about the history, since the testing of the first non-commercial tea plant in 1824, commercial cultivation of Ceylon tea commenced in 1867 by James Taylor of Scott, 
Scottish uh, descent, uh, right? This publicly known that seven distinct different terrain, soil composition, rainfall patterns, and climate condition contribute to uniqueness of leaf and cup quality, right? Uh, Scottish person, no, right? Uh, so has uh, introduced this one uh, to Sri Lanka, one eight six seven. Right? See, don't take comments in one eight six seven. So uh, then, that is something out of uh, right uh, our focus, just to get an understanding about the history, how the was established in Sri Lanka. Uh, then, uh, so we look at about the, the facts given, it clearly say climatic condition contribute to uniqueness of leaf and cup quality. So they focus on the uniqueness. Now, if you look at about the Sri Lankan tea band, they have never focused on the cost leaderships. It is always on the differentiations. We always tell to the world, our tea is the best in the world. So Ceylon tea. So we have applied differentiation strategy in tea industry. As a nation, we have applied that one to the world, not a cost-based strategy. Uh, so one of the theory area it come into your mind, mind is uh, the diamond theory. How can Sri Lanka get a competitive advantage in the tea industry in the world. So we can apply diamond and come to a conclusion. Uh, the availability of factors uh, favorable in Sri Lanka uh, compared to other countries in the world market. Uh, so diamond theory can be applied a little bit here and uh, you can uh, 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 come to conclusions on how uh, competitive advantage come uh, to Sri Lanka in the world market. So one of the condition is the factor availability. Actually, factor availability is the key factor uh, to get a competitive advantage in the world market for us. Uh, for example, we are thankful for this Indian labor mainly, uh, right? Uh, human resources are available. No? So that's at a very low cost. At the same time, the climate and the required physical environment exit, right? Then uh, at the same time, if you look at about these home market conditions, uh, the, the demand for tea is very high. Uh, so your day starts sometime with the tea, uh, sometime end up the day also in the tea. You know? How many teas you take in a day? I think uh, maybe four to five cup of teas. For example, I take four to five cup of teas. That's uh, similar to uh, many people in Sri Lanka. So home condition is very high for tea. So that also helps to get a competitive advantage in the world market scenario. Then at the same time, we have the required uh, supporting industries for tea. Right? For example, distributions uh, is uh, here, required distributions. Then the, uh, if the company strategy, structure and rivalry, these things are available. So many companies, many rival companies uh, doing the business in Sri Lanka. So that ultimately helped to get a competitive advantage in the world market. There are so many tea plantations companies in Sri Lanka. There's a heavy competition among them. So that lead uh, to get some competitive advantage in the world market scenario. Right? So those are the key uh, factors uh, you can consider when you look at about this uh, diamond theory. Right? Then the Northeast, uh, rainy or monsoon season and the southwest seasons uh, have an impact on tea plantations due to the high mountain range in the central part of Sri Lanka rising to 7,000 feet and thereby shielding the rainfall, the two monsoon period do not significantly affect the other respective side. Therefore, the two seasons of different weather conditions result in warm days and cold night when uh, desiccating winds on either side of the central hills. Uh, these conditions create a conducive environment for the leaves to absorb nutrition and cause rapid expiration, drawing the chemical to the top tender leaves and the bud in the plant. So that how this climate in Sri Lanka helpful for tea plantation is explained now. Mid-country, western mountain region, high mountain regions, uh, eastern mountain slopes, southern low plateaus and valleys are the main region recognized for tea plantation. Then, 
the areas, main areas in Sri Lanka is also being given. Then uh, Ceylon tea has earned the reputations of being the cleanest tea globally. So very important sentence. Cleanest tea. Right? So cleanest teas mean uh, normally the quality aspect is very high. Pesticide free. Right? countries Iraq Turkey and Russia continue with strong demand for Sri Lankan tea. So that tell about our foreign markets. So very interesting. So, so there may be a lot of uh, uh, risk coming with this. And now already we know what is happening in uh, Russia. Right? Uh, there's a high demand uh, from countries like Iraq, Turkey and Russia. Continue with strong demand for Sri Lankan tea and were the top three import in the recent past. These are three main countries. We know there are some uh, internationals, uh, right, uh, barriers to send teas to Russia, right? Uh, study that part also. The risk factor come into the play here, right? So, I show you uh, some of the stuffs, uh, this uh, currency risk, I have to carefully look at about this uh, currency risk. So we all know that uh, there are three different type of currency risk. Economy risk, uh, right, uh, transaction risk and translation risk. So, so we have to carefully look at about these three risks and uh, how this is applicable to the given scenario. Now see, for example, the economic risk, the, the changes in the economy homo abroad. So if you look at about the current situation in Sri Lanka, it's badly affected to us now. The macro environment is not strong here. Uh, if you look at about the, the main country like uh, Russia, for example, now their scenario is also not good. Right? So economic risk is always there. So sometimes, for example, say, so our cost of uh, uh, goods increase. At the same time, we'll say Russia, sometimes we may not get the receipt. There may be some international barriers to get the required uh, receipt from there. Right? So this is one area I think you have to look at. Transaction risks, uh, uh, especially in Sri Lanka. No? So again, people are talking about the uh, depletion of uh, rupee value. Right? It may be favorable for exporter. Right? So transaction risk, translation risk, if you have some foreign asset and liabilities. So then uh, this arise, no? translation risk. So that's another part I think uh, you have to uh, carefully uh, look at here, right? Right. Then uh, currently Sri Lanka produces about uh, 300 million kilograms of tea for annum. Export for 2021 amounted to 286 million kilograms uh, at an average FOB price per kilo of USD 463. <laughs> Look at this percentage, for example. So uh, you can get an idea, right? 286 uh, divided by 300. Uh, from the total production, 95.33 is exported. <laughs> So only a small amount uh, is used by the local. So less than 5% is used by the local from the total production. Uh, more than 95% is exported. So uh, interesting facts. So at an average FOB price per kilo of USD 4.63. That's the average USD price. The total revenue realized for 2021 from tea export was uh, USD 1.32 billion. Uh, the tea smallholder sector uh, is a significant contributor and operate on 60% of the total tea land. A tea smallholder sector is a significant contributor and operate on 60% of the total tea land. Now, small players uh, are very important. 
not largest companies small players uh, contribute 60% of the total tea land and uh, account for more than 70% of the total tea produced in sri lanka <laughs> interesting facts the large companies only contribute 30% no so ceylon tea is one of the most expensive teas uh, then you have to carefully analyze what are the reason behind that so one can argue that when we are trying to make it unique the cost will be increased but there may be some other contributing factors there may be some inefficiencies sometimes we have we have not work on that now for example wastage i think uh, for example uh, so from tea plantation to factory uh, so uh, the in the process whether we have a correct process uh, to uh, right uh, bring them into factory correctly and use them uh, properly so there may be certain issues actually there may be some inefficiencies you have to carefully study that part also the global market and tea exporter need to be competitive but in global market you have to be very competitive no because a company this country like kenya india so they are dominating in the market now so when we were small kid we have never heard about even kenya Uh, as a main competitor sri lanka tea industry but now in the world contest kenya is the number one no maybe sir they are having an economic of scale due to the high volume no sir uh, compared to the sri lanka yeah yeah but now i think we can uh, focus on this one because this with this exchange rate depreciation uh, so now we have to careful look at about uh, in terms of the usd terms our cost uh, so maybe reduce right so if we have not increased the labor cost uh, in the same percentage we all know that is uh, uh, the people in the plantation is demand 3000 rupee daily wage nowadays right uh, but uh, so that may be an advantage so reason i saw that uh, sri lanka among the 10 lowest uh, uh, cost countries in the world you may have seen i think guys you may have seen that part so that may be an advantage but at the same time what i am referring here is there may be some some inefficiencies in the processes therefore we have to carefully look at about those stuffs right uh, an integrated productivity and quality strategy is one of the key focus areas for producers to reduce costs uh, integrated productivity and quality strategy so we have to work on uh, quality and productivity together you have to connect these two quality management so play an important role here so there is another area you have to carefully study so maybe some uh, quality uh, right you have to identify some quality cost like uh, right uh, prevention costs uh, then maybe uh, some appraisal costs internal failure costs external failure cost and you have to work on those uh, stuffs uh, maybe some uh, approaches like uh, a uh, quality uh, circles uh, then uh, maybe like 5s uh, concepts right uh, even uh, here it may work uh, kaizen concept actually kaizen will play an important role so you know that uh, continuous small improvements no focus area in the kaizen and lean management yeah lean uh, productions that's another area you can focus you can uh, uh, focus on th those aspects actually right so it is important that the producers adapt an integrated balanced uh, nutrition management system with more and more mineral and organic inputs to be applied in order to improve the soil quality to achieve environmental and economic sustainability uh, these are the key guys here uh, so when you go further in the case you will again find this information again and again so environmental and economic sustainability is one of the focus area these days no so so now whole world talk about this sustainability right so there are few things uh, come into my mind when when i see these words uh, under sustainability so triple bottom line principle three fees is one of the things which come into my mind gri reporting integrated reporting uh, again uh, this uh, esg framework so those come into my mind so now see sir so what is what is the gri integrated reporting sir yeah i will come back to that one right so these things come into my mind uh, so here if you look at about the uh, this point see environmental is one 
then economic uh, sustainability and focus on social well-being of the workers. So if you look at about uh, this uh, one carefully, you can see uh, this focused on, uh, right? Uh, this focused on actually, uh, give me one second. Right, this focus on uh, sustainability actually. So environment aspects, economic uh, aspects, and the social aspects, right? Uh, well-being of the workers and smallholders, growers, rather than looking for short-term gains. So, this is the key area. I recommend you to go for in-detail analysis of the sustainability area, right? So, what is sustainability? We all know the meaning of the sustainability. So sustainability means uh, meeting our own need without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Protect the resources for future generation. That is all about sustainability. Now, whole world is facing a lot of climate uh, problem these days. Now look at these few days we are experiencing. Huh? So, so what has happened to the air quality? So what had happened to the external environment? People say it looked like Borrelia here. So what happened to the Kilnochi? So look at, look at, we all started to experience this uh, climate change, even in Sri Lanka, these European countries are experiencing badly. USA experiencing that one. There was a huge flood uh, in uh, last, if you remember, Europe region and the USA. They have never expected uh, those type of things. So sustainability is a key area they focus here, right? So to do a detailed analysis on this, right? So triple bottom line, you know about this triple bottom line. So, so sustainability aspect is uh, incorporated here. So we look at about three aspects, people, planet, and profit. Now, if you look at about here, it's say environmental. So environmental uh, mean the planet aspects. So we want to protect the environment. We want to uh, protect the water, we want to uh, ensure the air quality and we want to ensure the land use, we want to pro preserve the uh, natural environment. Uh, those are one aspects. Then here they talk about the, this economic sustainability that the profit gets fixed. So this is especially the shareholders demanding uh, some return for their uh, investment. So uh, while we are uh, Thinking about the society and the environment, we have to ensure they get the adequate return. So that the economic aspects, but traditionally we only focus about these profit aspects. We didn't think about the other aspects. So we have to focus uh, uh, about other aspects in addition to profit, but we can't ignore the profit aspects. Right? Then uh, the social well-being, that the people aspects, and the people aspects. So we have to make sure that our employees uh, are right, uh, given the required uh, salaries, uh, the required environment has been created for them. Uh, then not only our employees, we have to think about society members also. That the people aspects. Right. Uh, then uh, a GRI reporting. So what is GRI report? I'm sure that you have learned this one. So GRI reporting uh, is uh, the uh, the first global standard for sustainability reporting. No, that's the first thing you want to know. Right, first global standard for sustainability. Right. Then uh, so uh, they are asking you to uh, report about the sustainable practices applied by you. I knew annual report. You can report these things. No. Right. So normally uh, so mainly focus about this economic environment and social and governance performance here. So economic is, uh, uh, so economic is one aspect. Uh, they are focusing. Now that is one area, no? uh, we have identified here from the three areas uh, under sustainability. So economic aspects, right? So uh, you can uh, write on that one. Then uh, environment impact is another area they focus. 
noise pollution, energy waste, environmental impact on refrigerants, then social indicators, another example area. Uh, social uh, indicators like labor practices, social and human rights, social aspects, uh, for example, CSR activity carried out by us, a uh, product responsibility. So these are three main areas uh, focus under this uh, GRI reporting. Actually, these are more prescriptive in nature. So there are standard KPI list. Uh, so you, when you adapt in this uh, GRI reporting framework, uh, you have to uh, report uh, the action you have done under each uh, KPI. So you can study that one in details, right? So, so I don't have time on that one. I just want to sh show you the key aspects. So it's your duty to go through them in details. Uh, maybe with your team members uh, or maybe with your uh, tuition provider, you have to go through for a detailed discussion with them. Right. Then, uh, integrated reporting is another area. Integrated reporting, uh, we know about what is happening on integrated reporting. So, in India, we uh, uh, connect uh, non financial information also no? uh, with the uh, financial information actually. So here mainly uh, uh, we focus about uh, how company interact with the external environment and how the capital will help you to create value. Uh, there are uh, six uh, capital you have learned actually, financial capital, manufactured capital, intellectual, human, social and relational and actual capital. So focus on those areas, how you can report uh, uh, the information on that one. The difference between these two is actually GRI, uh, is more prescriptive in nature. So if they give a list and then you have to report according to that particular list. Uh, uh, then but if you look at integrated reporting, that is uh, different from that one, that's a principle base. Right? So you can... Uh, uh, yeah. So, so is this a mandatory requirement of any rules and regulations? Uh, not mandatory. Right? Uh, so you, uh, you can uh, right, uh, decide that one. Right? Even in Sri Lanka, still we have not uh, developed some uh, right mandatory requirement. No? Still, right global context, uh, right. Uh, so you can voluntary basis you can use this one. That will help uh, to improve the, uh, the uh, transparency of uh, your reporting. Actually, so we anyway, even yeah. yeah. Anyway, there will be some requirement to having a certification from EU or European countries or something like that. No? Exporting. When, when yeah, 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 yeah. This ISO standard, you have to get some ISO standard. No, there are some ISO standard working with these things, stuff. No, right. So that will help you uh, to get a better uh, right value for the company. So even this uh, nowadays, we know that this under sustainability reporting, we uh, report about this carbon emissions, uh, carbon footprint. So there are different stages in this sustainability reporting. You no, know, in uh, different organizations. <laughs> Uh, so the intention to yeah yeah the intention to go public and the early adoption of this integrated reporting how will that how should the approach be for the company so that will give more value for them no so as a public listing actually uh, if you if they are focusing about the public listing actually they have to do a lot of uh, changes no so uh, so one thing is this, even this structure, I think they want to do some changes, even this board structure, no? So we'll go, go through those information later, right? Can you consider this thing under corporate governance, uh, uh, sir? Yeah, corporate governance also, these are all things actually. So these are interconnected, no? That's why, for example, ESG framework, uh, the, the same things are talking about the, adding the governance part. Then corporate governance, uh, uh, right, uh, is uh, considered in there actually. So, yes, you can consider that one, no issue. So, it's your duty to go in detail on there, right? So, I just show you some of the stuff that you can do with these informations, right? You have to work hard with uh, these informations, right? Then uh, now, now they are going to talk about the uh, the T company. So the, this stuff is uh, more about the uh, Sri Lanka tea industry. Now they are going to talk about the 
compare information. Olivia T. Chapter. Paprian Agro Company was founded in 1962 as a partnership by the T. Enthusiasts of the Paprian family. Uh, this commenced in 1962 no operation, who at the time were firmly established in the plantation sector. At that time, also they were established in the plantation sector. Olio Paprian and his elder brother, Peter Paprian, were the promoters of the company. Olio used his wife, uh, Pema's uh, 30 acre tea estate in Nelua. The desire to present tea loving consumer world by the unique plantation fresh uh, kappa, that means cup of tea, no? uh, motivated these specialists to give birth to the tea company. It had its suppliers and land in the southern province in Urukuma, Nelu, and Delaware. The company constructed uh, its first tea factory in Ugama in 1964 using the highest quality machinery available at the time. Now, see, uh, from the inspection itself, there are strategies focused on the high quality. It's a very important point. That should be the, uh, the philosophy of the company. So, deal with the quality, highest quality machinery at that time available. Right. So today, the company highly experienced team of professional tea tasters grade over 8,000 lots of tea for weeks and taste over 400 cups of tea for day. A highly experienced team of professional tea tasters grade over 8,000 lots of tea for weeks and taste over one cup of tea for day. Uh, so quality uh, aspect is really good, no? So they are having a continuous quality checking process within the organizations. Identify and selecting the right type of tea to suit suitable market around the world. Uh, look at, look at. So not only one type of tea they have, they have a different type of teas and which are suitable for different markets. So if you look at the marketing perspectives, uh, right, if you look at about the marketing perspectives, uh, so normally we know that there are three types of strategies you can use, undifferentiated marketing, conservative marketing and differentiated marketing. Now, undifferentiated means you offer one product to the whole market. No? Niche marketing, we are not operating in the whole market. Instead, you select a segment and only serve in there. Right? Then the differentiated marketing means uh, you have a different product version uh, and serve to different market segment. So here, they have applied that strategy. Right? So they have applied that strategy. Uh, so what they do is they offer different product to uh, different markets. Differentiated marketing. They are committed to achieving the highest product standard at the most competitive price. Uh, see, they are working on the price also, value for money. The company supply premium quality. So differentiation strategy, clear indication of differentiation strategy, premium quality for distribution by foreign tea dealers and agents who cater to the global market. These dealers have developed trust in Fabian uh, uh, tea over the years to provide them with the first quality silon tea, that uh, finest quality silon tea that has been processed using the best technology available. The company, so again, talk about the strategy. This is completely about these differentiations. The quality is the main focus area. Uh, the company was incorporated as a private limited company in 1985, converting its accumulated capital into ordinary shares of Fabian Micro Private Limited. Allocating 210 uh, uh, shares to Oliver, uh, 201,000 shares no? to Oliver. Peter was accordingly allocated to one third share. Who is uh, Peter? That is uh, the elder brother. No? So Oliver have two third of the shares, the Peter is having one third of the shares. So total uh, shares is uh, 301,500. Uh, right. Uh, then in 2005, Oliver signed an agreement uh, with the government to acquire Thomas Hill Tea Factory in Moravaka. Now more information, right? So at the moment they have six uh, tea uh, plantations. No, so they acquire. Thomas Hill Tea Factory in Moravaka for a 49-year lease at an investment of 60 million. It was a third tea factory of FA. Uh, this is the third tea factory. And the company had to recruit new staff with this move. The government owned tea factory was not performing well, although it had a duplicate supply of high quality tea leaves. The company is not performing well, no? The minister agreed that the factory can be developed with the involvement of private management. Oliver viewed the location of the factory as a tourist destination. 
uh, now they acquiring uh, another uh, tea factory in moravaka and uh, this is this is owned by government and they believe this location can be sold for tourists right location factory as a tourist destinations uh, this is a uh, uh something uh, connected to eco tourism we talk about eco tourism these days uh, people talk more on these areas eco tourism for example company like uh, dilma also focus on eco tourism nowadays which can be used to promote the brand by converting the business of tea production into an attractive tourist tea production point i then could be used to market fbt globally she developed a special brand called fa gold organic tea uh, She came up with the organic tea brand also for this purpose. Right? Then people come and see how these organic teas are cultivated. Right? So eco tourism will be a key point here. And eco tourisms, right? So uh, you can study a little bit more on these eco tourisms. so it's a form of tourism involving responsible travel to natural areas uh, conserving the environment and improving the well-being of the local people so key point is uh, you are trying to conserve the environment no you try to uh, protect the environment and at the same time the local benefit will people will also be benefited these uh, foreigners will buy some of the products uh, sold by them so that will be helpful for them right so study on that about the codorisms right so making profit by conversion the factory into a tourist uh, destination was a successful project as the tea estate consists of a little water bowl to a uh, water bowl is also there foreign tourists were charged an entrance fee of usd 10 and offer a cup of tea at the water bowl observation point it generated an income of usd 12000 in the first year of operation uh, internally they don't have a hotel actually they just allow local to come foreigners to come and uh, uh, see and they charge 10 usd even they can go with this uh, hotel project so within the uh, the plant itself they can may right construct a hotel so then they can uh, earn more money so that may be a possible option in nancy right then uh, recognizing the demand of tea exporters uh, olivia accept a limited number of orders to supply blended tea fact with private brand label of customers in 2009 right so this what is the private brand actually so private brand labels uh, is another area you can study uh, private brands uh, so that mean that now in this scenario what happened is this private brand mean that uh, so you manufacture the tea then what you do is you allow another retailer uh, to use your tea and uh, use their own brand names right so retailer ask you to uh, put their brand names for example this kills tea if you go to kills or kagis they have their own products so they have their own brand products they may have taken from different manufacturers and they put their brand name in there right so that was the strategy initially applied by olive also olive accept a limited number of uh, orders to supply blended tea facts with private brand labels of customers in 2009 in the beginning to exporters enter into an agreement with fa to buy tea bags facts under their brand see you put their brand names now uh, they make you the labels and everything and uh, you do accordingly this business segment was improved late in 2012 with fa operating tea bags uh, that come in various sizes and styles including tins paper cups uh, canisters uh, boxes and specialized packaging gift boxes and wooden chest right so what has happened initially it was a successful one this private branding one the private label uh, production was successful with the experience uh, in tea production and the required standard and stick adherent to quality in the manufacturing process Yeah. So see, uh, so we have maintained the quality, you know, in the manufacturing process. If we created packaging to fit private label demand by catering to the unique design requirement of customers, professionally designed packaging with carefully sourced material was used to create unique brand request by a few exported competitive price in the international market. 
the program provide a single load double chamber t bag with or without t and uh, without tags and envelope and metal free t bags in a few years olivia how you realized that the debt collection from private label buyers was not easy ah that was the issue so they didn't pay uh, you maybe delay pay or sometime uh, total uh, right uh, uh, omissions so now uh, that can happen so that's a problem for us uh, there be more bad days uh, in cash flow problem for us because of this delay in payment many buyers walk away gradually and they claim it was due to inefficient management of supply uh, uh, something wrong with us uh, that was the point highlighted by them if you also came across some weakness in packaging standard uh, these are some of the issues of them actually See, this packaging issues was there then there was some inefficiency of uh, management of the supply through complaints it was not to olivia because she did not accept to supply what the customer specified because the packaging cost machine set up credit period and profitability olivia declined supply customers with design uh, we didn't do uh, what uh, was request by them we didn't uh, meet their requirement uh, so olivia started to pay less attention to private label production and focus on selling fa brand uh, international that's just history actually initially we had uh, this private label uh, products then gradually we stopped that part and started to focus on our own brand or we start to pay less attention to private label production focus on selling fa brand internationally expanding the wealth of fa gold to in over 30 countries world wide uh, now see we are selling our product to 30 countries world wide that uh, 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 risk uh, foreign uh, uh, a uh, risk is applicable here right uh, that's about plantations right so see this uh, the way that case study is uh, organized introductions uh, about the whole company uh, yeah uh, is, is that way they are going for the foreign market they uh, initially try to channel the foreign market uh, by going for the private branding then if it is not successful they are directly go for the foreign market is that they are way forward sometimes sometime they so initially also they had their own brand no? so at the same time uh, what they have done is they sell uh, uh, to some other retailers also and uh, then the thing you, is uh, yeah, yeah. the thing is sir uh, here mentioned the inefficiency is then maybe they are uh, that may be uh, they are uh, they don't have enough uh, quantity to supply them because they have another uh, demand that that yeah, yeah. In yes. yeah they are not fully focused on that business no they were combining these two that the cost was very high no because these different retailers come up with different packaging requirement no then they have to do some machine change up make up changes yeah. that may be uh, not an easy process yeah. so that's why gradually she stopped that one and start to focus on their own brand yeah another thing is there is a problem now sir while they are having a big demand but why they are going for private branding uh, while killing their own brand now initially they may had a wrong uh, strategy and now they have realized no now they don't have that particular strategy no you do different different things no experiment the things no now they have understand that better thing to have their own brand now but in the case of the east East Asia, the Malaysia, it is a, again a private label branding, na? No? Uh, I have not studied that one, so probably, right? Yes, you can study. There may be different different uh, right uh, uh, strategies used by different uh, countries and organizations. Right. So, shall we move to the next one? The small Sma question. Yeah. So here uh, they are probably looking for a uh, market expansion, looking to 30 countries. The later on the uh, case study, they are mentioning that they are going for organic tea, which is also sort of a focus strategy, to focus on uh, a particular product. So going uh, with the two these strategies would be beneficial for the company, uh, product expansion, uh, sorry, uh, market expansion and focus, or uh, would be contradicting. No, I think so. They have clearly mentioned that they have six uh, tea uh, plantations, no, under the group. So, so if you study the main company in the Sri Lanka, also what they do is uh, you. So, if you try to do the same thing in one place, then it's a problem. So, 
so for example potassium ne for stuck in the middle no will not uh, uh, come up with uh, anything good actually so but here uh, so uh, possibly in one plantation they can practice that one that's not a problem actually you study some of the uh, tea plantation company so now many people have uh, going to this uh, organic tea production also now that's not an issue actually yeah but sir they are, they are they are they are having a, a demand if they mention here the demand they can't supply so excessive demand they are having so with that under condition so focusing on these two strategies would be a uh, uh, challenging for them or would be beneficial for them because even uh, they have the six plants uh, they they are not in position to supply their demand yeah i think uh, so i don't think that will be an issue because uh, this uh, there is a, there will be high demand for the organic uh, products now these days in the world even the, if you look at the prices actually determine no not like this normal tea prices this organic uh, tea price is very uh, high you know so that's a profitable segment for them so they can uh, uh, still focus on that one actually so I, otherwise uh, in the long time sometime what can happen is gradually whole world is uh, right move into that uh, area no so if you focus about this traditional uh, business then uh, so we will lose the competitive advantage at the moment it is uh, good right? there is a he heavy demand for that one right but gradually that demand will shift to this organic uh, tea so i can't see any issue with that one i think they can concentrate on that one hope okay. i think yeah uh, just a point on that, uh, sir. Um, uh, since Russia, Turkey, and Iraq are the main uh, customers for Sri Lankan tea, and it seems that all three countries are having problem. Even the Turkey is going through the same crisis similar to Sri Lanka. So mm -hmm. there will be an issue. So that may lead to looking at other markets. Yeah, yeah. So market development may be a strategy. That's why I say that uh, here we talk about that uh, strategy part. No, uh, sorry, it's risk part. You remember I mentioned about this current risk. There are three risks. No, so so you have to think about the uh, the mitigation strategy of this current risk, the economy risk. What are the strategies? For example, so one of the option is uh, as you have mentioned that think about the new customer market, right? Economy risk, right? So customer market, uh, uh, even Sri Lanka. So we'll say, for example, if there any uh, issue in the maybe manufacturing option, also we can think about. Oh, even Kenya or India go to those things and uh, right uh, start tea plantations in there. Yes, your point is correct actually. Right. Think about that. Uh, this uh, in addition to these risks, think about the mitigation strategies also. Right. Is that okay for you? Yes, yes, thank yes. you. Right. So we have limited time. So right, we'll uh, go through quickly. I think till one o'clock, no? Right. So maybe small break and we'll continue later. Right. I will continue till uh, uh, 11. Is that OK for you? Also, right. Then. Uh, yes, sir. Start. Yeah, OK, thank you. Right. Then uh, they started to give information about this uh, smiling kids. Right. Uh, that is the hospital actually. Right. Uh, Dravendra invested in smiling kit hospital in Colombo, a private child health care service provider, which was established as a partnership in 2008. Now, see, initially, uh, so they give some information on uh, the, what are the business they have. Right. So, it mentioned that uh, he's a, a chairman of the Divya Roland Hospital Private Limited in Colombo, right? So that is one. Uh, right now they are going to information about this smiling kit hospital also, right? Uh, I hope that uh, this is the same hospital they are referring at the beginning, right? The company so it come under one main uh, company arm. So, Devendra is the president in India. Right. So, Devendra invested in Smiling Kit Hospital in Colombo, a private child health care service provider, which was established as a partnership in 2008. The hospital was a new concept and was initiated by a team of five medical practitioners, including Devendra. All of them were university colleagues and three were 
pediatrics uh, specialists by then and they all had an equal share of those 20 percent share no for each one five people get together and start by doctors mapedia their chief executive officer had a science and engineering background ceo being a person of person disposition he was able to create an uh, uh, amenable uh, atmosphere that means friendly no right uh, it must be in the hospital for everyone uh, uh, hospital for everybody they will not see your work closely and they found it easy to develop a business with a combination of engineering and medical profession with the involvement in the team business with olivia and the experience in medical service management of smiling kids they will was competent that he could run a separate hospital independently right so he had been a consultant in forensic medicine for several years and it was difficult for him to deal with the legal system he found it tedious as he had to visit country uh, court many days a month and some of uh, officer too difficult to work with <laughs> he was fed up with his uh, job and then uh, uh, thought that better to uh, run a hospital right as a director smiling kid he did well and the other owners were happy about the role he played uh, is a good uh, leader at smiling kid smiling kid recruited management staff with accounting experience however they even observed that the hospital benefited more from employees with science uh, mathematics and healthcare related education than for management degree holders and expert I look at look at so smiling kid recruited management staff with accounting experience However, they will observe that the hospital benefit more from employees, science, mathematics, and healthcare related education than from management degree holders and experts. Uh, now, the recruitment study is changed. Initially, management trainees, now they want to recruit uh, the people who have more uh, science, mathematics, and healthcare related education, uh, not management degree holders. Hence, he changed the human resource policy. So that even the marketing manager should have science, medicine, pharmaceutical, or nursing related educations. Oh, that may be okay, right? Marketing guys can have some knowledge on that. That's okay. It was successful and staff work as a family bringing more business and profit. A family type culture exit here. So if you analyze the culture here, this is a more family type culture, not a bureaucratic culture. So not uh, uh, governed through uh, strict uh, rules, policies, and procedures. Very friendly culture. Even it was mentioned that CEO's leadership style is a very friendly leader. More people-oriented leadership style, not uh, more task-oriented leadership styles here. Now this recruitment uh, selection proceed, process uh, policy is okay, seem to be okay. Uh, but I have small doubt here whether you can run uh, organizing without any management degree holder without the management knowledge, right? So we'll see. Then uh, later in 2012, uh, four owners migrated and sold their equity in the hospital to Draven and Olivia. Ah, there were five doctors, no? Now they have uh, sold the equity. Now it become a fully owned uh, business for their family now. Uh, Olivia also uh, come into the scene now. Uh, initially, they were the only involved in the business. No? Probably Olivia has also purchased, uh, purchased some shares. Smiling Kid was reinvented there after by Draven with the aim of ensuring the well being of the community. Reinvented uh, the positioning change, brand repositioning. So initially, it was a kid hospital, right? It was mentioned. It was a kid hospital uh, like Nine Wells. But now they change that one. They want to focus about the well-being of the community. Probably they have opened the hospital for other members also, other patients also. Uh, but they focus on well-being of the community. Maybe uh, some welfare uh, program for uh, uh, some of the patients. With this ownership change, Smiling Kid was renamed Devia Ronald Hospital Private Limited. Uh, initially, they was given the name that one. So. It mentioned that uh, Dravinder uh, is the chairman of Devi or Ronald Hospital Private Limited. Uh, now, so the, the same organization we are talking, same hospital we are talking. Uh, initially, it was called as Smiling Kid. Now, the name has been changed after acquiring uh, by the uh, the family of Dravinder uh, Pool. Right? They have acquired the whole uh, total uh, ownerships of the 
hospital right so Oh, then uh, it may be this ownership chain spinal kit was renamed Davia Rollins Hospital Private Limited and was steered by Olivia. That means led, no? Uh, Olivia, I'm professor, right? Ah, uh, left the hospital. Olivia held the CEO position. Now, uh, how Olivia entered to this business? Uh, the chairman is the husband, then the wife became the CEO now in this business. Olivia liked this life change. She had a dream of administrating a hospital than being a single practitioner. Being a medical practitioner, Olivia thought that she could give a better healthcare service and it would be a portfolio business in her hand. A year later, a renowned healthcare expert, Dr. Setu Siriman, joined DRS, subscribing to 20% equity. Another guy joined, no? Setu Siriman. Was appointed as a director, and 60% of the equity was shared equally by Raven and Olivia. That means 30%, 30%, 20% for Setu Sirman. There's a balanced part of 20%. No, yes, the new director board consists of five members Devin, the Olivia, Setu, and uh, two other non executive directors who subscribe equally for the balance equity at 100 per share. Equally mean that that balance 20% shares are owned by these two guys. Right, non-executive director. Now the question is whether non-executive director can have uh, shares. Yes. Then what happened to independence? Are they independent or not? No. They are not independent. No. Uh, non-independent. Uh, uh, so non-executive directors they have. They have uh, ten percent, ten percent share ownerships. With extensive experience as a senior health administrator who served at several healthcare institutions across the country, Setu envisioned a holistic approach to sharing his experiences and vast knowledge in order to expand and enhance DRH health facility service and reach out to a wider community. Uh, she is also a doctor, no? then she can uh, right, expand the business easily. Right? Now, there may be certain things you can catch from these sentences uh, with extensive experience as senior health administrator who serve at several healthcare institutions across the country, Setu, uh, that is the other partner, right? Uh, Setu envision a holistic approach. Uh, uh, holistic approach, that means combined approach, no? A total approach sharing his experience and vast knowledge in order to expand enough DRH cable to facilitate services that reach out to wider community. Uh, now they are focusing about wider community. Right. Initially, it was only a kid hospital, but it's now it's a total different story. Uh, Reposition uh, hospital now. Setu's family had a long history with government hospital. His father was part of the first graduating class of St. James School of Nurse in London. Kalini Orthopedic Institute was the first practice of Setu, which offer pediatric, orthopedic, and sport medicine care. The institution visiting physician also treated patients and several other entities, including smiling kit. Remarking on his performance as a director, Setu said the following. Now, see, there is a new guy is coming to the scene. Setu Sidiman. Now, he is also having some sort of ownership, 20% ownership of this hospital. Uh, She's a doctor family. He's coming from a doctor family and a very well-known person's uh, family is also well-known to people. Now, that person want to do a lot of changes here. Now, what the statement he has given, we at DRH aspire to be the leading provider of total healthcare services to not only children, but the wider community by pushing the frontiers of medical technology coupled with unparalleled quality and dedicated service at affordable cost. Right. Look at look at this point. Initially, it was a kid hospital. Now, uh, the, that uh, uh, focus is changed. Now they want to cater to all the people, right? So, what is the strategy they apply? The quality plus uh, quality service at an affordable cost, value for money strategy. It is an honor for our family to be able to support the delivery of local healthcare service in this way, following a career in the state health sector. I look forward to continuing a service dedicated to this industry and contribute immensely to betterment of DRH and the community by sharing my knowledge on the healthcare system. Following the reorganization, uh, mentioned that these are reorganizations. 
We are expected to provide a multitude of services by initiating many operational facilities, expansion of laboratory facilities, advancement of the radiology department with facility of CT and MRI scanners, and establishing personal services of subspecialists such as IE, ENT, and gastronomical services. It was true that hospital has created employment, but more than the employment, it provides pre indo care for around 10% of the in house patients. Ah, see. So 10% people get free uh, indoor care. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, the screen uh, we are seeing is still uh, not the uh, not the code that. Okay, now it's fine. Thank you. Now okay. Yes, sir. thank you. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, so. So can we can we see in this part as a product development like a service development? Yeah, there are a few things actually. One is they have changed the strategy. Initially they were applying a focus strategy. Now start to focus about the total market, right? So initially they were kid specialized hospital. Now they are focusing about the all the patients. Now, within that, actually, there are some social services also. Now, it mentioned that more than the employment will provide, uh, sorry, uh, but more than the employment will provide pre indo care for around 10% of the in-house patients. Uh, it's a huge amount, no? 10% people get free medicines who are financially unable to attend proper expert medical care. So, that interesting point, actually, the CSR aspects. So can, can we, rather than taken as a competitive strategy, can we think this as a growth strategy, like a product development, a new service development? This one, that mean, uh, so yeah, you they are, they, are, they are going to expand, expansion of laboratory facilities and advancement of radiology department, some facilities. And so it is over development, right? It's a growth development is start is a competitive strategy like uh, ends of or, or generic strategy. No, don't uh, confuse with that one because those are two different uh, areas actually. Is uh, so under the Porter's one we look at about what is the overall strategy used to get a competitive advantage. And so talk about more growth strategies. How can you get the growth for the business, right? So if you look at about the, the folders one, so the, here they move from the focus strategy to mass market strategy, right? But if you look at the ends of one, uh, so this one is uh, right more, uh, yes, product development, you can talk about product because they have added more facilities, no? And at the same yeah, time, market development. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's what I mentioned. Yeah, market development yeah. also. Yeah, in the this is service industry that we can apply like a product development or service development. Yeah, yeah. So both, yeah. both applicable here. Mm, yeah, thank Right. Then here this uh, CRS, uh, CSR uh, aspects. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt. Uh, sir, this indo care is given for the patients who are already patient in the hospital, no, sir? Who are already admitted, no? Yeah, yeah. So they so may sir, have uh, a scheme. What is they, may, they may have a scheme that uh, within the, uh, according to that particular scheme, so they allow 10% people uh, to admit to hospital and uh, uh, free of charge actually. I remember this, uh, Asri had a similar service if you remember, long time ago, I don't know whether now they are having that one. Right, uh, Asri hospital in uh, Naraham Peter, there was a one uh, right uh, particular day, uh, there was a separate area where you can get the free medicines. Right, so, so similar strategy here now. They have applied, sir. But but this is uh, it is mentioned that uh, ten percent of the in-house patient means or people who are already admitted, no, sir. Oh, not like that. Yeah, yeah. Already admission mean uh, for the admission purpose, you allow that the quota now ten percent. So uh, people know that that for the admission purpose, that ten percent uh, quota is there. Then when uh, the uh, when these poor people come, right, uh, they may have a selection process on that. Not everyone is given uh, the opportunity. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, sir. Sir, indo care means uh, free, uh, given free of charge, all no, sir, medicine and including all. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Who are financially unable to attain proper expert medicine care. 
This the, is CSR things, yeah, guys. CSR and, and the value addition for the service, no? So, say like a CSR and... Yeah, CSR. So, that's a very interesting point. CSR, because if you look at about even this, uh, the their main strategy is they talk about uh, initially, actually. So, what type of person they are, they have mentioned, no? If you look at about the this uh, lady, this uh, main lady, uh, right, this uh, Olivia, no? Right, Olivia. She is having uh, some sort that type of mindset actually. Want to help the people, so the company also going in line with that one actually. She is the CEO, no? Right. So. Yeah, based on the triple button theory, no sir. Yeah, yeah. So here, if I show you, uh, give me one second. This corporate CSR. You know what is CSR? Right. So you started to focus about the society's well-being also, right? So more broader stakeholder perspective is being considered. If you look at about the CSR stances, so uh, one can argue this is uh, a more shape of society strategy, right? Uh, or multiple stakeholder obligations. I still think that this is still there uh, in the third steps, the third strategy. Multiple stakeholder obligation. You try to fulfill the different stakeholder objective, not a shape of society. Under the shape of society, you started to think about society first, then uh, other objective come. So they are applying multiple stakeholder obligations uh, stances here. So that is one thing you can look at. CSR aspect can be analyzed, right? So, yeah. So this uh, change in ownership happened in 2013. And are we to assume that the the free care is still applicable for this company or have they discontinued? If there are no further information given on that one, we have to assume that it is discontinued. Continue. And so to add on to that, uh, the government is also uh, planning to change their uh, government hospital and include some uh, paying wards. So is there any, like, should we connect those uh, cried uh, facts into the case or like i think it was just a proposal only no right so in sri lanka you can come up with different proposal but never implemented no right so under the pestle one you can right make a note on that one under pestle analysis right that will be compared actually right since so government start do the same no so so that will be a disadvantage actually because this is the same government doctors are coming to these hospitals. No, even there are some other facts actually. You know that uh, I have heard that 600 doctors have migrated. Uh, when you are doing this five process analysis, you have to consider all these facts, right? Then uh, the issue with the supply side. So, how can we find the uh, required suppliers to deliver the service, right? So, that will be a huge issue. No, am I correct? These doctors uh, are migrating. No, yesterday yes, also sir. I saw in the news that the doctors are. Right, protesting. Uh, demonstrating against no right yeah. government, yeah, protecting against the government, and uh, so I saw some board and like that. That's good, actually. Not accountant are doing like that, no. <laughs> uh, actually, it's impacted everyone, no. Right, so actually, even I am thinking whether I can survive after these tax implementations. One third of my salary should be pay as a pay, right? So it's very difficult for me to survive, actually. So these professionals are leaving actually. So that's a different aspect. But when you are, yes, your point is correct. You can consider that one on the pistol. Even you can consider that one on the five process also. Right. Then. Uh, uh, so a small point. Yeah. So be um, Marpetia being the most appreciated CEO with the change of ownership, he being left the company, would it make a like uh, idea about the management style of this Fabian family? Does it like they are not much into uh, corporate governance and they are on to their own missions or something? Uh, does there any indication on that? Uh, the problem is they have not given much information uh, on the leadership style of the market. You know, this is a very friendly environment was there, but not talking about the governance part, no? Yeah, no information. So I thought uh, it's sort of a giving uh, insight, like sort of a small indication there because it's just like change of ownership, uh, leaving the key management personnel. There is yeah, a... but 
actually the, all these things happened in 2012 no long time ago i think we don't have to worry much on that so okay. because uh, right we have to focus about 2022 no right okay. if this is happened recently past your point is correct actually there may be a lot of issues even the culture change and maybe the point you highlighted there may not be proper corporate governance the dominance family dominance that's not good no from the corporate governance aspect that those are the point you are suggesting no am i correct yes sir yes yeah yeah that's true so maybe within the unseen uh, they may give a lot of information about this uh, governance issues they have and right? this only we are probably uh, dominating in the board right so, yeah. so even uh, right mapiti uh, right the family they take uh, family decisions uh, and not hear into others uh, so that will be uh, an issue actually even here actually this uh, ned uh, even though we have these non executive directors they are not independent no? so uh, they are not talking about any other committee like audit committee uh, reputations committee nominations committee those informations are not there even risk committee they can have a separate risk committee those informations are not there so there may be issues in the governance actually the objective of establishing this uh, sub board uh, committees uh, is to uh, increase the transparency of the governance so a lot of issue in the governance that's true especially the case uh, when they are going for a listing in there so data will find that one when they are going for the listing so that the, this current environment may not be suitable for listing entity right then uh, so we were here no right in 2015 uh, drh acquired a small private hospital in gold uh, now see they acquired another hospital this is the second hospital no now initial one we have in colombo now the second one in 2015 drh acquired a small private hospital in gold the hospital was sold by the retired mr and mrs neville for 50 million together with the small building and medical equipment mm -hmm. Uh, Graven and Olivia developed it as a branch of DRI, extending the building obtained on lease terms. However, customers only visited it for inpatient care during the first few years. Inpatient care, not outpatient care. That means just a uh, right hospital, people can admit there. No channeling services, right? Uh, during the first few years, and with an average inpatient count of about four patients per day, it became obvious that keeping this hospital open was not a viable option. In fact, what the community said was that it need convenient outpatient care. Thus, the hospital in gold was closed after three years, mainly as a result of drop in automatic ratio rate. Ah, it was closed, no? The average uh, daily inpatient uh, census was three when closing was now. Inpatient service represents 10% of revenue, but account for 30% of the expenses. High expense you want. Right? Uh, an emergency care and outpatient clinic were built to replace the hospital. Uh, initially, it was a uh, uh, right, uh, inpatient hospital. And now they change that one, close that one, start a different hospital, outpatient clinic. That means like uh, channeling one, people come and uh, uh, get the uh, right uh, medicine from different doctors. And emergency care also there. That means similar to this uh, uh, right inpatient one, only a part of that part were built to replace the hospital and service at the outpatient center include urgent care. Outpatient center is also there. Right? Uh, sorry, uh, inpatient uh, center. The not the dominant part here. Outpatient center is the dominant part, no? Uh, so, sorry, sir. Uh, again, uh, we are seeing a different screen. Uh, now, okay. So I think it's a uh, uh, connection issue, so we can see the correct screen right now. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right. So uh, now. Uh, they're telling uh, that uh, so they convert this one into outpatient clinic. Now, what are the areas they have? Uh, were built in to replace the hospital and service at the outpatient center included urgent care, imaging, laboratory, and physician officers. However, concern was expressed by the patient about the poor ambulance service as the emergency situation were not handled properly and the emergency treatment was not offered by ambulance service provider. Olivia fan and advanced ambulance service, including emergency care, but was not yet implemented. Uh, even though they have planned uh, uh, emergency care, that is not working properly. No, there's an issue with the ambulance service. They want to uh, change that one. 
they want to go better service but still not uh, implement the advanced ambulance service right now we are at the end of the page number five right uh, so is, is there any possibility to give an investment evaluation or like the yeah yeah maybe expansion is there later i think they are giving information so because uh, they want to uh, right uh, get more funding to expand the hospital and that's why here plan and advanced ambulance service maybe some uh, capital required for that part no yes your point is correct right, right then uh, shall we have a, a quick break around uh, right uh, 15 minute break okay sir thanks right Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, in the last line, it is mentioned that uh, uh, the plan is not implemented, no, sir. Uh, uh, sir, it means implemented uh, until 2021 or for that period. So very difficult to conclude without uh, additional information. No? Yes, sir. That's what I am asking. Yeah.
Right, welcome back. So we'll move to the page number six. I hope you can see the window. Hope you can see the window. Yes, sir, we can see. So DRH, now they are giving some information about the financing sources. So DRH borrow rupees 3.5 billion at an interest rate of 12% for annum in January 2019 through a commercial paper for the purpose of purchasing medical equipment and extension of Space Boys Cardiac Center. Now, so they are talking about different financing of things, different financing options. Available well, company, we know that uh, normally uh, we have two type of financing sources. Uh, one is equity finance, uh, other one is uh, debt finance. Debt finance, right? These commercial papers are available for well known companies in the country. Right? Uh, so, let me be. Hello. So, excuse me, we can't see the screen. Can't see? Yeah. Others? Screen not share. Yes, sir. Can I see? Share. Sir. Screen not share, sir. Can't see? Screen need to be shared. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry. Now, hope it's okay for you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, here, if you look at about the, the financing sources, uh, now we have two options. One is equity, other one is a debt. So, now what company has done is uh, they have gone with the commercial paper. That's not a equity options. No, it's a debt options. Right. So they have a uh, uh, issue of commercial paper. So again, still not sure. Sir, so again, we cannot see. Can't see. Can't see. Yeah. Okay, so now okay. Right. Now, so they have uh, used this uh, debt options uh, of commercial paper, but uh, I feel that uh, this is a long term one and it's beneficial because uh, the rate given was 12%. Look at the current context, actually, it's beneficial. Now, it is rate around is uh, 30%. Even commercial bank, they went for this uh, debate issue. The 29% was given for five year uh, period. Even Bank of Sydney is going for debate issue. They are also going to offer 29%. Now, these are good options actually, right? Uh, for the purpose of purchasing medical equipment and extension of Space Force Cardiac Center, right? Uh, then, Olivia's finance director, Raja Karuna, used his strategic approach to raise equity capital in 2020, right? So now equity capital option also look at prior to joining DRH and FA, Rajakaruna had uh, 10 years of uh, Rajakaruna had 10 years of work experience as a finance manager in different industrial sectors, including a garment manufacturer based in Milagiria, I am Club Hotel, Hotel Candy and Nursing Home in Candy, a food and beverage company in the industrial zone. The plantation company in Hatton. So now they are giving some information about their finance manager. He's a vast experienced guy. He had associated with the major investors of New World Hospital PLC in Colombo. Uh, he's had a connectivity with uh, some uh, big hospital in Colombo. Using this network, he invited NEWO to invest in DRH and it was successful. Oh, look at, look at. 
Investment was done by a third party. DRS raised its equity capital in October 2020 by issuing 250,000 new order share to NEWO. So you have to look at about the shareholding. You have to calculate the shareholding, right? Just before the investment, they went and Olivia took step to appoint their son Roland as a director for DRA. Now the problem, right? So Roland uh, was the uh, right. So earlier was so the name was Roland. Is this is the eldest one? You see that one? They have given information. Yes, Roland, same guy. Elder son uh, was uh, joining the company, right? Uh, and uh, so now the issue, there is a corporate governance issues here. One of the issue is this. Uh, still, this guy is uh, studying for the bachelor's educations. Now, what is the competency level of this guy? That is a questionable. Uh, then, uh, what happened to that uh, experienced staff in there? Uh, for example, what about uh, Rajakaruna? <laughs> he is going to report to this guy, you know, director. Uh, it's a young guy, maybe 22, 23 years old, young guy. You have to report him. So what about the other experienced employee in the company? So this is a huge, uh, right, corporate governance failure, right? Appointing someone who is not having the required competency with the board. And this is a, a common practice used by many family-owned companies, but uh, some people are tactical when they are doing this one. So they allow their these young guys to join the company, maybe in the middle, uh, right, uh, middle uh, line, and then go up to the upper level, uh, go uh, up in the ranks, uh, right, gradually, not immediately. So, so that is something wrong here, right? So next, NEWO not only invested in it, it also contracted with DRH for the inter-transfer patients and shared services where each of will benefit mutually. Uh, now they have some mutual like, arrangement also. They are transferring patients each other also. Uh, there may be some transfer pricing issues in taxations. So we have to carefully look at that aspect. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, now the this finance director, uh, he's report he's overlooking DRH and FA both as an executive officer. So so is it practical to manage uh, like two big companies like that the only connection between these two companies is the uh, common ownership by olivia no, and... no, no way it has mentioned that he's uh, in other hospital also no, not mentioned like that uh, it says like uh, prior to joining drh and fa rajakaruna had 10 years of work experience as a finance manager yeah that's true that means like uh, he is over i think uh, he is overlooking the bo both companies if i'm if i'm mistaken please correct me sir yeah you, you are talking about director no he's also having a directorship no finance director no can no finance manager i uh, finance director so he can no he can represent the board no issue Manager, the ice issue, yes, I agree your point. Director means he's in the board, no? Right? Ah, yes, yes, sir. Okay. Right. So then, uh, this transfer pricing is another area you can uh, look at carefully, even segment reporting uh, is another area you can look at. Table one below provide details of the non next directors of DRH. non next directors of DRH. Uh, so now they were talking about five directors, right? Now uh, they have uh, uh, two other, uh, they are giving information about two non next directors, uh, Dr. Rajesh Kumar and Sadhaheva. So if you look at the Rajesh Kumar, a board certified consultant, ENT surgeon, since 1999, he has served in public service in several highly distinguished capacities that include director of the Central Health Department. He's very experienced doctor. Then uh, Sadhaheva, uh, Mrs. Uh, an attorney at law. Since 2002, uh, she was a director of the Public Law Reform Institute from 2010 to 2015. 
She is also a former member of the Council of a Public University from 2012 to 2015. So lawyer. Now there are a few uh, things you can question. Uh, one is about the diversity of the board. Now this is a this, the board is dominated by doctors, no? Right. We know that uh, husband and uh, wife both are doctors. Right. In addition to uh, that, uh, here another doctor is there. Then Sabdaheva is another. Uh, he is different guy. He's a lawyer. Then there was another person. No? Uh, he was also a doctor. No? That was mentioned uh, earlier. Right. Uh, so. So when you given more information, uh, right, you can come to conclusions about the board balance. But there are no information about IT expert. There are no information about the HR expert. There are no informations uh, uh, about uh, right uh, some of the technology experts, right. So the board balance is questionable. Even this, uh, if you look at the male female balance, I think that is there, no. Yeah, here this uh, this wife is also there, no. So maybe to some extent, still not 50-50, but some extent that balance is there. Sir, right. sir, sir, does the board represent the finance equipment? Sorry? Finance equipment person in the board? I think we have like that one guy also, no, but not the information was not given. Initially, they say five directors, no? So that the doubt I am also having because husband, wife, then other doctor, plus now there are two, no? So subsequently, they may have appointed this finance director and the son also. Now seven, I think. Seven directors, no? So that is something we have to make. But there is no any clue regarding that finance manager has been appointed as to the director board, no? So other than saying finance director? Yeah, normally the when you use the word director word, I assume he is in the director board. Yeah, okay. So this is the key point here. So if you can uh, go to that sentence over there, uh, it says that um, larger corner, larger it's Olivia's finance director. Yeah, something. Okay. Olivia is both in both companies. OK, yeah. So now now it is seven. No, the son is also there. No. Seven people in the board. Right. Yes. Sir. Right. Uh, then actually, we, so there may be some senior. Uh, is there any independent senior uh, director, non next to director? So not mentioned, no. Right. No any details, sir. So what yeah. about the gender diversity? Yeah, that that's the point I have. I think two ladies are there. That's why I say that this fifty-fifty balance is not there, no. So uh, only two, no, out of seven. So gender uh, diversity is also not there. The director board seems to be reporting to CEO in this, according to this organization structure. Director board? Uh, the line is reporting to CEO. The directors is below the CEO as it shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, I didn't come to that point. Yes, there's an issue in the structure. No. Yes, we'll discuss that one. Right, then uh, Olivia established an uh, environmental management division in DRH. Uh, however, the division is not functioning well because of the separate staff was not recruited. Figure one below show the current management structure of DRH. Now, I feel this is an example for legal risk. Why I'm saying like that? In a hospital, this environment management is a key area. Because there are a lot of waste uh, created within the hospital, there should be a proper way of dumping them, right? So, so now uh, there may be some issues attached with the hospital. So they may not have used proper uh, waste management system. The legal action may have been taken, and to respond to the legal action, they may have established environment management divisions. But unfortunate thing is, even though uh, the division is there. So uh, it is not functioning well. So still, I think within the unseen information, uh, there may be some concern about the uh, the legal risk. So keep your eyes here, right? So yes, as uh, someone told, yes, there's an issue actually. <laughs> CEO uh, is uh, staying above the director board, 
right? Maybe something wrong with the diagram, I think, right? Uh, oh, uh, what can happen is uh, CEO and the chairman, but chairman is the husband, no? right? Should be in the director board, no? CEO is that lady, no? So maybe more powerful. There's something wrong in the governance, actually. Uh, regarding the husband, Devendra, there wasn't a mention about him being a chairman, was it? Uh, or did I miss that? It was mentioned at the beginning, no? He, he was uh, originally he was with that smiling kids and he came through that. Like, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah this. So, so CEO, maybe uh, we don't know. So maybe sometime error. Or oh, you can question that one, how the CEO can be uh, uh, staying above the directors. If you look at a balance of the functions given here, uh, I have one concern about this HR actually, right? So HR manager, commander, general administration manager. So I don't think that's a uh, best thing to do actually. So HR should be a critical function in the organization. It should be separate functions. Uh, then uh, other than that, I think it's okay. I think that technology referred to this IT also. Uh, if IT is not uh, identify under that, uh, then uh, so that also should be a weakness, right? So otherwise it's okay actually. You can see this uh, normal uh, main functions in the organization, right? Right. Now see this, uh, now they talk about the hospital. Now again, they are going to talk about the plantations. So there is an issue about the organizing the facts in the case. So it's up to you to uh, correctly organize the facts given. And we look at about that also. So they have given this uh, agro private limited. We discuss these facts. Then right, these are the key points. Then we discuss about they were all in hospital. Also, then we discuss about the management structure of DRH also, right? So growing sustainable tea, the golden opening FA project. Now they have mentioned about, they have started about this organic tea. You know? Now they are giving more information on this. In 2013, Olivia brought uh, new tea machinery to the factories. However, the small farmer based structure impeded the development of the factory. So she had the challenge of how FA could make better use of insufficiently tapped tea resources to utilize the full capacity of new machinery. Olivia was able to establish a farmer society with 30 farmers initially by maintaining over the tea garden. Ah, so she has created some farmer society with 30 initial by when open tea garden. It was possible as the garden was surrounded by mountain with fertile soil and shady teas. Uh, the symbiotic uh, ecosystem in the secret area with insect, trees and flowers or create a conducive environment for tea. The farmers were given exposure to physical face control alternatives and Olivia thought Certification as an organic tea garden from the International Tea Associations. So see this, this is a focus strategy in uh, right one of the uh, right uh, factories. They want to uh, produce uh, organic tea. So you get the help of uh, farmers also, create a farmer society and uh, probably she purchased the product from them also and introduce some organic uh, uh, fertilizers even, alternative fertilizers were introduced. And uh, try, try to get some uh, certificate, ISO certificate, for example. Sustainability aspects, again. Only I strongly believe that FA should appear as an environment lover and protector. FA is committed to safeguard the environment for future generation by adopting sustainable, transparency and encompassing approach in all its activities. While balancing these to ensure the production of the best quality, Olivia nurtured water bodies and replenished downwater resources and made it a co value at sand practice. State plantation adapted water efficient practices to minimize water wastage and ensure water conservation by investing in water management projects. FA factories and state could act and manage the flow of water, they have a minimum impact of flooding. So, this is all our environment sustainable strategies. That's why I told you the sustainability is a key area here. 
So FA commence a project to educate farmers in 2014 called the Golden Organic uh, Grape and Agro Project. Only obtained support from the Top T Association and Lipton Global for this socially responsible project. Golden Organic Grape and Agro Project. This is CSR, no? CSR project. Adapting good management practices was the key learning for farmers, such as frequent plucking, turning the tea canopy, uh, canopy into a solid, having a flat table-like surface from which shoot can protrude so that they could be easily spotted and plucked and plant in new seeding in the space where plant have died. So introduce some good management practices. No? Better plucking and pruning growth product improvement up to 10% gross margin hectare. So productive was improved. That was one of the issues they faced. No, uh, it was improved with these new practices. With a further boost in, probably expect as long-term changes begin to take effect. The GOFA was appreciated by the ministry later, and Olivia was granted the best CSR award along with financial support for UFA. Uh, key information: see, best CSR award. So CSR in the blood of this lady, you know, right? So one small question. Yeah. Uh, when we develop in this pestel and sort analysis and also this uh, competitive five forces model analysis and all. So do we like need to like uh, only limited to the given information or we need to like take the real world information into the our analysis? Definitely you have to go to the right uh, external world when uh, sufficient information is not available. Then you have to look at about what is uh, the real uh, situation and then pick the point. Thank you, sir. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a slightly different story is being told outside this case. Uh, the organic uh, production, I mean, uh, for switching to organic uh, fertilizer, has resulted in a huge drop in uh, production. So, so how to relate to that, sir? So now, the, as per the case, they are saying this product is highly, uh, rec I mean, uh, regarded and re recommended. So, but that mean uh, efficiency. Yeah, this yeah. yeah, efficiency level has been improved now with these new practices. So initially they were uh, mentioned that uh, there were some inefficiency issues and uh, these new practices have helped them to uh, right, uh, eliminate those uh, issues, mentions. Right, the now and future of FA. Uh, Silon T board explained that the drive towards sustainable practice in all aspects of the cultivation, manufacture, storage, transmission, and distribution of tea has gathered momentum due to new legislation and industry rules. You can look at there are some industry rules they are talking. So sustainable practices, right? At the annual research conference of Chartegon in 2020, Professor Lakshika present a paper challenges are opportunity for the tea industry. So definitely you have to go with sort analysis and pestle and find out those informations. She explained that resource efficiency and cleaner technologies are fast growing and emerging, which require the tea industry to invest more in these areas. Mm -hmm. new, new technologies are emerging, so you have to invest in these new technologies. Currently, the tea industry generally suffers from, from poor awareness level, inhibiting cost and lack of policy support, especially for smallholder farmers. These are point tackle you can use for this, uh, uh, especially for the pests and the uh, sort tackle. So modernizing the tea processing will result in low carbon and reduce climate change and vulnerability, and it will create a sustainable tea industry. Although some adoption is occurring, there is a need for capacity building on climate change issues and funding support. So all, we all talk about this climate change, these things. Very important point, right? If you study this climate change, what is happening in the world? And what are the decisions taken in the recently concluded this uh, climate change uh, conference? 
funding support for the technology set up by industries geared to low carbon and climate resilient industrial development. Currently, there is no funding mechanism to implement climate change initiative. See, there is no funding mechanism, but uh, we know that uh, recently, uh, recently uh, concluded uh, climate change conference uh, uh, established new funds to support the developing countries. Climate change initiatives and companies are required to mobilize funds for their own, their own. It's a disincentive to many who follow the standard of sustainable agriculture network. At the moment, it is not there, but uh, in the future, it will be implemented. No? An international body that says standard and recommend best practice for sustainability, Rainforest Alliance, an international non-profit organization that says standard for sustainable practice by tea cultivators, has partners with many tea growers. Uh, please study all this information, right? This uh, climate change, those stuff are important. I have a very simple example, right? Uh, when I did my CMA case study, uh, I remember the case was talking about similar to this, some of the sustainability practices actually, right? Then what happened when, uh, right? I didn't go for much in details actually, but uh, in the exam actually, the sustainability was tested. I still remember there was a graph given uh, about the sustainability, for example, carbon usage, right? And uh, carbon uh, usage, uh, carbon emission actually, this carbon footprint, and asked to make some improvement to that particular graph. Then uh, second part was actually uh, about, uh, uh, so what are the action you can take to uh, improve the sustainability in the organizations, right? Similar stuff actually. So you have to study more on these aspects, right? Lakshika state that climate change mitigation should be funded as how other country factories and private public partnership be part in the opportunity in this regard. So please study climate change. Right. So we started to talk about this climate change now. Right. So uh, so I will uh, come to theory part later on this climate change. Both society and government authorities are on alert today about sustainable strategy for healthcare service providers. Additionally, global organizations insist on lowering the impact of uh, climate change by decreasing industrial greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change and sustainable impacts all rank as one of the major risks to growth of healthcare systems. Environmental, social and governance initiative in the health sector, ESG, and we call it as a ESG, are starting to be pursued as co-element for long-term value creations. Olivia considers sustainability as a key performance indicator for the healthcare sector as the sector is in a transformative period. Right. So, see, sustainability has been identified as a KPI. That means they are focusing on this one and try to achieve. For example, they may have some target on this uh, carbon footprint. Right. And they try to manage within that particular level. So ESG is one of the main area examiner talk about. Right, ESG is again, actually, if you look at the ESG framework that talk about economic, environmental and social impact uh, of a business on society as well as the environment. So in India, we set goals, uh, establish policies and implement strategies, right? So these are some of those things we please uh, mute your mics, guys. So, but uh, it seems that the, that department is non-functional. Yeah, yeah. That uh, the non-functional is that uh, about this. Uh, uh, so non-functional is. Uh, this uh, environmental management, no? Yes. Yes. Even though we have established, we are not working uh, well with that one, actually. So ESG framework is one of the area you can focus, actually. So we can consider about the environment aspects, this energy use, carbon footprint, climate change, waste management. Now, these are the areas, actually, we have to focus. Yes, your point is correct, actually. This environment aspect is completely ignored. No? So because even though we have a uh, right department is not properly working, no environment management division is not properly working. 
that's a concern. Right. Uh, so these are aspects we have to look at. Social aspects here to under EST, we look at about the different different area. employee welfare, uh, local social welfare, uh, healthcare initiatives, welfare initiatives. So we have some example on this one. Even hospital 10 percent uh, 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 free for in uh, patients, right? Then uh, so. Uh, Governance uh, areas, you can fo focus on that one, but there are some issues in uh, this governance in this organization actually. Uh, about the board balance, about the non to directors, about different uh, subordinate committees, uh, there is no senior independent director, the non to director. So these are some of the concerns. So another thing, they are. Yeah. So they are okay with social aspect, but they are are not okay with the environmental and governance aspect. So we will have to suggest uh, uh, some initiatives to enhance it with environmental and governance aspect, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree, uh, agree with Ma. This uh, normally uh, they have uh, right uh, focus on the social aspect. Yes, there are some issues in the environment and governance aspect. Even though CEO is having a philosophy uh, regarding this environment aspect, uh, not practically implemented. Right. So then uh, another area you can focus is this uh, sustainability goals and the ERD. Right. So look at about this, uh, some of the sustainability goals. Now you can study on these things. So you can uh, right, uh, categorize uh, different sustainability goals under these three categories. So that's another area that you can focus. So they were talking about this climate change. No? So what is climate change? And we all talk these things these days. Sir. Yeah. Yes, you can raise. Yeah, you can raise the questions. Right, this uh, climate change, I mean, actually, this uh, long term shift in temperatures and weather patterns. No, yes. Now, yesterday, right, I was in the office around uh, 8 30, 8 45. Then I, I was in the Columbia here. I just came out from my uh, room and uh, come to the this uh, external environment. Right, then what I have found is uh, a very chilly, actually, chilly environment was there, actually. Right, Colombo. <laughs> So today also, I think it's still not changed. No, I saw that uh, Kilnochi also 17 uh, uh, Celsius temperature. Right. So these are long term shipping temperatures, no, and weather patterns. Right. Uh, so uh, that affect the whole world. We talk about this uh, uh, melting down some of this uh, uh, ice, uh, right, uh, berg that uh, we have, right. There may be some uh, area like uh, Argentina, Antarctic uh, regions. There may be some uh, problems, and sometimes the whole world may be destroyed as a result of that one. No? Right? Uh, yes. Right. So one of the thing is one of the contributing factor is burning of fossil fuel. No, well, so we, we try to reduce that one through, for example, solar solutions, even electrical vehicles. Those are helpful on that one. Now, this is very important one. You study this one, climate change decisions. Uh, there was a convention took place uh, on 20th November 2022. Uh, so, India, uh, they took a very important decisions. So, what the decision they uh, took, they agree to provide loss and damage funding for vulnerable countries hit hard by climate disasters. They establish a fund to help some countries which are uh, uh, affected through this climate change. Very important initiative. So in the case itself, say that there are no funding, no arrangement. So that may be one of the things you can connect with this. Right. Then government took the groundbreaking decision to establish new funding arrangement as a dedicated fund to assist developing countries and respond to loss and damage. So Sri Lanka is a developing country. So, so this is an opportunity for us. Right. So government also agreed to establish a transitional committee to make recommendations on how to operationalize both the new funding arrangement and the fund at COP28 uh, next year. 
right. So that's another area uh, you can uh, focus actually, right? Uh, then we can move to number six. This uh, golden opening print, FAGO. Olivia shows uh, how important uh, managing water is to the business and communities by creating water bodies that improve the microclimate in the state of FA and building community water storage facilities with the cooperation of the local government authorities. These projects were highly appreciated as Olivia allocate the fund appropriately while maintaining quality standard and protecting environmental resources. So want to preserve the water, no? That's a good uh, initiative, actually, right? So establish fund even, right? Uh, so allocate the funds even for these projects. Then she shows true motivation of society and no profit expectation in returns. See this, she showed true motivation of society. Uh, more, uh, uh, so leader who want to serve society. Uh, we talk about even uh, social entrepreneurship these days, right? No profit expectation in return. She stated that business and society are one unit. Now see this, she stated that business and society are one unit. If you also understood the importance of conserving energy resources, only I invest in new technology and encourage the use of renewable energy, renewable energy. So preserving environment, no? To promote environmentally friendly practices throughout the operation of the company. For this purpose, Raja Karna brought the concept of green bonds and approved Singapore investor through Growell Capital Limited, a private integration consulting firm. However, the foreign investors did not find them attractive on to liquidity of the bonds. Uh, green bond is one of the uh, suggestions made, but it didn't work. But even now, Sri Lanka government also trying to issue some green bonds. No? Right? So what is green bonds? Uh, look at this. So these are uh, uh, fixed income financing instrument uh, to fund some project. Uh, those are having a uh, positive impact to the environment and climate change. There are some uh, uh, investors, uh, environment conscious investors, they uh, invest in these green bonds, right? So normally we use this one uh, for uh, environment protections uh, or environment uh, preserving projects. This can be used by any uh, organizations, right? Right. Then, uh, but it didn't work, no. So Raja Karuna had knowledge and experience of share issues of uh, at I am Club Hotel where his objective was to raise low cost capital through the capital market. He was the manager for the merger of Amtra Hotel with Centric Group ahead of the capital investment plan of FA. Rajakarna proposed that the company should be listed on the stock market uh, so that it can enter the listed debt market. So they want to list this. Please mute your mics, guys. Raja Karna proposed that the company should be listed on the stock market so that it can enter the listed debt market. He explained to the director that there is no risk for family ownership because the public holding of equity can be limited to 100,000 ordinary shares. So we had to look at about the listing rules actually. Right? So that is one area I think you can focus. Uh, listing rules. Right. So, possibly in the Dirisavi board, no, not in the main board. So, minimum of 100 billion at the point of listing stated capital. We will see minimum public holding record. We will see uh, how much in the Dirisavi board.
what the point he has mentioned here is uh, that is number of publics are 200 Hundred thousand orders, yes, no, they mentioned. But is that correct? It should be two hundred thousand, no? Am I correct? No, it's two hundred figure is there. You see, uh, yes, two hundred, no. So this uh, minimum 100 million and 200 number of shareholders no, the public share. so <laughs> 200 shareholders no am i correct 200 shareholders yeah, yeah. yeah 200 yeah. shareholders and one million in. Thousand one uh, ordinary shares have the holding of equity can be Hundred thousand one have they mentioned? I can't see such information. It's two hundred one okay. About about the previous uh, previous uh, this one. Yeah, in the above mentioned, it is one hundred million. No? Further about. Yes, one hundred million. No, yes, yes, yes. One hundred millions. Uh, Yes, it has been mentioned 100 million mean 100, no? Uh, so maybe the share value may be 100, no? Right. You just uh, study this one, right? I didn't go in depth in this one. You just go through this one in depth and then try to connect these information. Right. So then, uh, yeah. Any green bonds are available in Sri Lanka currently? Not yet, no? As per my knowledge, no. no. I think okay. government is trying to issue, no? Uh, there was a, uh, in around May 2022, they have issued some kind of uh, note on that, CBSL. CBSL? Yeah. So we have to check, uh, right? So as per my knowledge, this, uh, this government is trying to get some funds uh, by issuing some green bonds, uh, but uh, yeah. IMF is not happy on that decision. Yeah. So in addition to IMF uh, help, government is trying to get some funds from this green bond issuing uh, issuance also. Right. So Raven then always did not agree to the strategy of going public and ask for alternative avenue for borrowing. Later in 2015, the finance director managed to obtain syndicated term loans of USD 15 million. Syndicated term loan means that uh, you few banks uh, collected together and uh, grant the loan, not from one bank. Uh, for risk mitigation purpose, uh, so banks, uh, few banks, uh, right, uh, join and then uh, do the loan. So it's a syndicated loan. A USD 15 million, which carried on interest rate of USD three month live plus 1.21 for annum. The board was happy about the finance director's approach and assign him additional responsibilities of handling uh, investment and other function of both F and DRH. In March 2020, Rajakarna and Devendra wrote 12.7 bitcoins with the price drop and account for them as digital asset of DRH. So this is a concern. He is talking about the Bitcoin. Uh, there are a few things. One thing is central bank is not regulating this one. So not legally accepted one, right? So you can purchase in uh, informal people buy and sell this one, but it's not regulated by CBSL and not controlling. Uh, uh, central bank are ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ <laughs> Uh, uh in recent past just study that one so what is the impact that one uh to the balance sheets look at that one very carefully 
at that moment they may have uh, obtained 130 million gain right uh, so but so the current uh, moment this may be different story at present it may be a different story starting this one very carefully right so rajakarna and devin the brought 12.7 bitcoins when the price dropped and accounted for them as digital asset of drh the investment show gain of 130 million they are on by 30 First March 2021, which was utilized to pay a payout bonus of see 35.5 million to top management. Ah, uh, so cash leakage actually, no. So we have uh, uh, declared them as uh, bonus, ah, uh, approximately around I think uh, uh, 30%. I think 30% uh, of what you have obtained as a bonus. So the cash flow may be further affected actually. now right so i don't know whether they are uh, right uh, keeping them in the market value right there may be some accounting uh, uh, practices issues also so now the in the current uh, uh, environment the price has dropped and they may not have adjusted this one in the book so it, it is adjusted that uh, affect to the probability of them badly uh, but is a wrong decision i think this uh, money has uh, leak from the business so that may increase the working capital problems and also sir they have uh, issued that bonus only for the top management they purposefully they have made that in order to say the top management a bonus okay. yeah yeah so that's a concern but top management almost the family members no except one or two guys right uh, all others are family members hmm. so fas organic tea estate was certified and the company commences a uh, brand in the tea and export were growing uh, so they have taken some certifications no good actually there's a plus point actually strength by 2020 olvias farmer society had 100 farmers in only in plantation of more than 500 acres so initially it was 30 you know now it has been increased up to 100 farmers the company own 1502 hectares out of which 640 were organic tea estate now now look at so majority become uh, organic no no uh, only 640 right around uh, we'll say around 40% organic fertilizers were distributed free of charge based on the area of the tea garden and field officers were employed to guide the farmers our input cost pressure is expected to keep the probability of the company under pressure so cost is increasing If we had pressure on co-operating probability due to the increase in wage cost, the company had to face the risk associated with tea being an agricultural commodity as well as the inherent cyclicality of the fixed cost intensive tea industry. Moreover, tea estate costs were primarily fixed with labor related costs, which are independent of the volume produced and account for around 60% of production costs. Ah, uh, see, this now the they are demanding for 3,000 daily wage, so that badly affect these organizations, right? so the further the cost will be increase so the challenge for survival the margin is uh, uh, reducing right so lot of risks are there guys here please uh, identify different different risks operational risks market risks if for exam market is bitcoins one right uh, operational risks uh, legal risks reputation risks lot of risks are there so identify uh, the mitigation strategies also connect with them so what type of impact they can make on the business so right so do risk analysis identification of risk uh, probability of occurring that one right then the impact plus the mitigation strategies so that can be a possible question by the examiner right so then uh, this led to the variability in the probability and cash flows of fa fagoti had a premium price and over demand from the middle east uh, premium price no organic tea and uh, they can uh, enjoy a premium price so always you can enjoy price premium no so it's a differentiation strategy we are applying differentiation strategy you enjoy price premium and there is a over demand from the middle east that means you can expand this uh, further it help and ensure the long term stability of the tea supply by the farmers the farmers were happy as it reduced their exposure risk in all in planting tea uh, tea trees price fluctuation and cash flow returns so we have connected the farmers and we purchased the uh, tea from them 
Will you explain the reason press brief in the following? Climate change mitigation become increasingly important at the point of processing energy efficiency and low carbon energy sources are key to reducing emission and can lead to cost saving as well as additional benefit, such as lower pollution level. Our prototype solar power project at each stage supply domestic energy requirement, and we are assessing how these projects perform with the long term view of the future investment across every state we want. See, they have already applied the solar uh, also. They have solar power projects in each state. So good practices, I think, good sustainable practices. Even though, so there are some weakness. Uh, we talk about the structure related to this uh, uh, waste management. Actually, they have applied a lot of practices. So a lot of evidence are there. You can uh, pick them and uh, identify under uh, subheadings, under three uh, prospects, actually. Uh, two perspectives, economic, uh, environment, and social. So with his uh, mother's vision and experience plantation and tea making, the young Roland wanted to explore more in agricultural technology, grow plant and reinventing Ceylon tea. So that Roland one, that the, this uh, elder son, no, he's in the business, right? So unseen, I think there will be more information about him. Uh, he was so interested in tea production, its color, smell, and chemical content, read a lot about DNA technology innovation in agriculture. Roland did experiment at a tea factory and found that it is better to avoid uh, high withering as it could change the flavor. Uh, this dyeing, no, this dye, he repeated the experiment changing withering and uh, fermentation in a dynamic procedure based on different tea level. Roland continued to adjust and calibrate the parameters to find the optimal parameters that could keep the traditional taste of tea while ensuring quality and output. He contacted tea research team as advised by Olivia. Roland experiment was seen as positive and was supported by the tea research team of Scotland, a UK operator at Swedish University. Now he's working on these uh, uh, innovations, right? DNA technology innovation in agriculture. So good guy, you know, his thinking is good. Initially, it was mentioned that he's working with a research firm also. Uh, there were some informations, right? Then Roland applied for bachelor's degree in biotechnology at Stockholm University and started the program in 2017. While his main area of interest was biotech, he started different professional programs in economics and business as Olivia wanted it. Roland showed that if you're using old tech machinery, suggested important new tech machinery as a measure that could regulate fermentations and integrate fermentation temperature and humidity automatic control system. Utilizing a process control system, heat take chain water and uh, thermocouples, the FTACS automatically increase and decrease temperature and humidity during fermentations. The result is that uh, oxidations, fermentation, and color of the tea are optimized by achieving high quality teas. I think there will be more information about uh, him. For example, I think he, he will be made as a CEO, and uh, like that information in Nancy. Right? Then Fargo tea cures. The tea produced not only maintained traditional flavor, but also became more uh, fra fragrance, uh, fragrance due to the dynamic uh, fermentation process. Roland version of Fargo tea was highly demanded as traditional craftsmanship and modern technology were optimized by the expert at Stockholm University. Well, we have continued Roland ideas and she opened a direct sale tea cures at Liberty City Mall in Colombo. Design display the brand image and for the brand experience to consumers. She marketed it as a FAGO, Fargo, tea direct from the state to consumers. Instead of the tea going from the tea estate to the factory and production companies, the tea market then meeting the dealers of tea and the dealers going to the market of retail trade and finally the retail unloading them to the consumers. Uh, so change the supply chain, no supply chain uh, process change. Tea lovers, including high official, corporate leaders, and diplomats were enthusiastic to come to the kiosk. All we ex extend the kiosk by creating corporate meeting space and name it Fargo Boardroom and offer it for corporate meeting free of charge initially. Again, CSR uh, initiative. Later, it was possible to charge for the venue and Fargo. Uh, later, they start to charge. And Fargo went to go mostly by every day, and it required uh, to reserve the room in advance for corporate meeting as it did not charge much for the venue. The finance director, however, showed that the boardroom is running at a loss continuously and you need to increase the charges and prices. So this is not a profitable one. 
Olivia listened to the idea but did not want to change it as it was constructive obligation for FA. So it's a more uh, CSR type of a act, not a profitable act. Right. Then uh, silicon pyramid. So you can uh, write the IPO. You can look at about this pros and cons. Huh? They have mentioned about this uh, IPO so also, no? Right. Then Silicon Pyramid. So Olivia had the problem of retaining a well-skilled tea making team at the time of the acquisition of the Thomas Seal Tea Factory. The main administration staff was removed uh, by Olivia. New staff were recruited. Uh, so that is something wrong with the leadership style, no? New staff were recruited. So there may be some legal concern on that one. The way the method we have applied to terminate these employees. Right. Again, legal risk here. And they have recruited new staff. So there may be uh, some legal risk here. Right. So method we have applied. So it is it is in 2005, no? Yeah. So there may be some ongoing cases, no? Right. Stop or remove all even new staff were recruited. FAS middle managers rarely stay for more than two years. Uh, there is an issue in the culture also. The working environment may not be favorable for employees. Uh, recently is the uh, this is, you saw that uh, so one of the software uh, employ, company employee committed suicide, no? The workload will be very heavy, not bearable. Oh, there may be some issues within the culture, very difficult to survive. Even though sometimes the working hours may be six hours or seven hours, uh, internal culture is not favorable for employees. Maybe issue in the succession plan, maybe no development for the employees. There is no friendly environment, stick laws, rules. We don't know. There may be some issues. Staff was removed by Olivia and new staff were recruited. FA middle manager rarely stay for more than two years. Middle managers, no? That's a key point. She had to hire a consultant who had experience in tea craftsmanship, accounting and finance function and technicians. The consultant included a well-known tea specialist, Selvaratnam, who had been the president of the Sri Lanka top tea association for several years. Consultant is a well-experienced guy. Additional provisional. Uh, Professor Lakshika Panandu of the T uh, Research uh, Center uh, of the Central University of Sri Lanka joined the company. Professor Lakshika was involved uh, in the implementation of new FAG unrestricted silicon pyramid key in tea bag in 2017. It was attractive fact and appreciated by tea expert and specialists. We have spent a lot of time marketing the product and arrange a commercial program to the product at the launching ceremony. All we have started the, uh, state the following. So they have came up with the new innovations, no? right? Uh, then we are proud to introduce our new unrestricted silicon pyramid tea bag, coming from generation of master planters dedicated to the fine art of tea. We believe this new treasure will revolutionize the tea industry, tea experience. We have carefully filled. These silicon infused with premium ingredients, real leaf teas, full, uh, whole darts and powers, natural herbs, extract spices, and real food pieces. It bends, uh, speak of perfection, and delivers maximum enjoyment. Indulge and uh, gratify yourself beyond your imaginations. Our silicon infusers allow discerning concern and to experiment, experience an exceptional cup of tea. The structure allows us to fill them with the most premium grade of teas and herbs. Uh, the state of the art production process is within an ISO 22000 and IMO certified environment. Ah, that's good, no? So ISO 22000 uh, connect with the food safety management. IMO certified environment waste management standard. So ensuring the highest level of hygiene and food safety standard. Uh, uh, Beavering uh, your tea become an experience uh, and just watch your cup unfold as each ingredient is free to release all its flavor. 
the silicon pyramid tea bag is unique and incomparable to other tea bag the fine fabric color will clear view through the bags you will find yourself examining the ingredient creating a visual enhance that is sure to please the senses this innovative culture is there no so they try to make some innovations on continuous basis together uh, with this move all we are negotiating the uh, files and now for malaysia b hd fn n to enter the east asian market uh, this is a, a right area for further study so this may be further develop in the unseen part right so which is dominated by chinese companies if and manufacture and sell can uh, can milk and other daily product and a range of soft drink the company manufacture its product in malaysia and thailand and operate in thailand indonesia singapore and philippines if and n manufacture both soft drink and dairies and their co soft drink brand include 10 plus lemon tea can uh, can plus and if and soy below is a press release by fpa which all you are made in early 2018 and uh, still this is history ah uh, 2018 story right so what they are telling about uh, 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 in the press release fa met uh, today and deliberated on the strategic road map for the company participant in joint venture with pizen now for malaysia bhd joint venture we don't know what type of joint venture this one so not a separate company right uh, maybe a strategic arrangement for the development of the faculty factor business fa will initiate discussion with fn in participant the joint venture strategic business partner for the development of the packet tea business this end we say that uh, with this measure fn and fa will their respect to skill of marketing and distribution and tea plants and knowledge to focus and develop packet tea business to a much higher level fa is a ceylon tea icon sought after by tea lovers in the middle east europe and the us the new venture will enable the company to have direct access to east asian market you can develop new market no fn N is a consumer good company with a large distribution reach. This alliance will enable to upscale in its FMG operation. Now, this is strategic partnership. There are no share issuing or anything is happening. Just uh, agreement to work in a particular area. Development of packet tea business, right? In the unseen, what can happen is they may enter into the company equity, uh, right? Uh, so they may purchase the company equity and become a shareholder. that type of scenario can be tested so how fnd did not test up an investment joint operation or partnership with fa now see no joint operation partner fa instead they agree to distribute the product through their distribution network ah uh, just only distribute the products uh, through their distribution fa's whole product range black tea white tea herbal tea extra tea hibiscus uh, mint cinnamon earl uh, grey english breakfast opa bio P B O P P E K O E Ceylon Miss Ceylon Doom Green Green Tea Mint Green Tea Jasmine Green Tea Lemon Silicon Pyramid F Cover Exported to F N with the F N logo printed on them. For this purpose, F N distributing arm and market and logistics P S E enter into an agreement with F A. So what has happened is uh, so so we are going to distribute our product through this new partner, right? so what can happen is they may try to increase the interest within uh, this particular organization they may buy shares that can happen nevertheless if an n suggest that fa should become listed ah so they are suggested to become listed so there may be listing rule you have to keep a look at right yeah and broaden the opportunity strong administrative system and track of stability performance and financial report would enable any future strategic partnership so look at this uh, uh, these are financing sources no so one uh, you are trying to get more finance for expansion purpose by issuing shares that is uh, one of the options they are asking you to list in the share market and uh, after that they may purchase some of the shares of you and become a, one of the main shareholder that may be the purpose right so look at about this ib options so what are the pros and cons of uh, ib options right then uh, health check so in 2016 uh, uh, drh initiated 
corporate health packages where the companies are again hospital. Now they are talking about hospital. So up now we talk about the plantations. No, again they uh, come back to hospital. In 2016, DRH initiated corporate health packages where the companies were offered medical checkup on credit. The packages were covered by a leading domestic insurance company. The health package was subscribed for and insurance policies were taken up by many companies and government department authorities. Uh, so one of the studies they have used, connect with the corporate world and uh, allow them to do some health uh, uh, tested. They are employees to do some health tested. Right. Uh, the quality of the service and the low prices brought many customers and the customers started to queue within first two years. Consumed DRS introduced new packages after right for the demand. The health package were mostly on credit and a balance of approximately 2 million was due as of March 2021. It's not uh, significant, no. This credit amount is not significant. Currently, several health packages have been offered as shown in table two below. Mm. They have given different health packages they have. A full body checkup, 15,999, no? Uh, good worth. Right. Then director strategy. I will see what is that. Roland, while assuming the role of strategy director. Ah, uh, what is the role given? See, interesting. This is Sun, no? Uh, this young guy become a, a strategy director. Explain to his business development managers that the local healthcare consumers, a consumer can be considered to be sophisticated in comparison with other countries. The entire decision making process relating to the consumption of healthcare is based on the doctor they wish to be treated by in other countries. The patient look for the best hospital. They do not follow the doctor consulting channel. Here they rely on the person rather than the hospital they wish to get care for. That's true, no? You look at about the doctor, not about the hospital. When the person develops his wealth by grabbing money from the patient, disappear with no post-treatment care, CSR or anything. The difference is that, is that if the hospital or clinic is sold by a patient, then we can give more benefit and care to the patients. So we have to change the system. We should never market individual medical factories but very tough no country like Sri Lanka so then everyone has to get together and do this one so one hospital I don't think uh, is practical especially in a situation like this most of doctors are leaving the country so we should develop the hospital and brand it and minimize medical or administrative falls the demand for private sector healthcare has increased because of higher income level and changing preferences the provision of health insurance has also supported the growth in the healthcare sector some hospitals have adopted digital tools for patient support, such as patient education apps, diagnostic app, and e-consultation. These are mobile use. Huh? So initially also they talk about 4.0, these mobile uh, uh, apps. Those are some of the examples for new technological adaptations. By 2021, there were nearly 200 private hospitals of varying sizes, 5,000 private pharmacies, and 1,000 laboratories in Sri Lanka. In September 2020, the Minister of Health reported that non-communicable diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, diabetics, and cancer, have cost to the economy extraordinary. True, no. Increasing access to private health services is a focus of the government as it is difficult for public sector alone to meet the demand for healthcare service. So, vast opportunities available uh, for expansion purpose. During uh, recent years, uh, DRH. Uh, Felt that it costs us some, uh, but unbearable. That is issue. Cost is high. Some of these important costs include truck shortage, wages, and labor costs. Uh, these are uh, uh, macro environment issues, no special duck shortages, non pp medical supply, equipment costs, and capital costs. DRH expend uh, financial resources to cope with the ongoing duck shortage due to the pandemic and deteriorating exchange rate, the lower than normal drug supply due to Practiated pharmaceutical supply chain has been made the increase in demand for certain drugs necessary to treat patients. The situation has been a perfect storm for drug shortage for many vital drugs resulting higher costs. Surrogate wage costs have been rising in the COVID-19 pandemic. All these are challenges actually. DRH is experiencing increasing overtime costs and has turned to staff wage and manpower firm to address healthcare worker shortage. Risk, risk, the operational risk. Then the mitigation study also have been taken. We see this outsourcing some of the things to manpower companies. How their wage demands are high due to an increase in demand for healthcare workers. The effect of the virus on hospital wages and labor cost is clear. Hospitals have experienced increased costs for non-PP medical supplies and equipment. 
for example dr8 acquire predicated in anticipation of patient the demand for hospital service increased due to pandemic and the rush in public hospital dr it worked to expand treatment capacity by incurring cost to set up additional space for residential patients icu bed and other treatment beds they expanded right hospital was expanded the cost of providing support to frontline hospital workers and their families so social aspect will continue including child care housing transplant covid 19 screening and treatment were all borne by drh good more employee benefits so erg framework right uh, then triple fee lot of example are here solvi and roland uh, were interviewed by combo television ceo forum telecast recently during the interview olivia explained how the healthcare industry has to juggle abnormal patient volume and rising metal costs with an ongoing staff in short and additional labor cost all the challenges these things roland as a new director of dr stated that there is an increase in digital customer interaction so if we use technology correctly work as a buffer against rising costs is therefore important to understand changing success factors over the next 5 years technology yeah. adaptation is a key success factor hello sir yeah here mentioned that olivia and the roland were interviewed by combo television ceo forum so who is the ceo is olivia or roland or now olivia is a ceo no no they may have invited roland also even though it is called a program no ceo forum right so chaman also may be participated right so roland has a new director of drh stated that there is an increase in digital custom interaction so if you use technology credit work as a buffer against rising costs it is therefore important to understand the changing success factors over the next 5 years service automation can result in savings and the value of technology platform to patient engagement interaction was witnessed over the past 2 years uh, we need to integrate custom experience into business strategy making patients uh, the focus of every strategy decisions supply chain have been disrupted in the recent past vendors and logistic need to become more resilient toward new risks supply chain also change right there are increased cost and scarcity of critical item thus we need more for inventory management they have mentioned about inventory management patterns also health system are uh, health system are developing an integrated supply chain strategies are working well in western society leaders are being challenged to think creatively about cost saving strategies so roland nas business development manager to look back at the success story of smiling kit hospital he has recognized the current potential for mata and tirulan hospital service as a specialized service and uh, now again they are going to change the strategy so initially it was a kit hospital and then open to everyone now again they want to go to focus strategy right he has recognized the current positions for mata and tirulan hospital service as specialized service managers presented their observation and recommended that drh can strategically recommend smiling kit as an independent hospital because child health care demand would be double in the next decade ah they are not going to right throw this existing one and start a complete uh, exist change the strategy of the existing one instead i think they plan to add a new unit no right independent hospitals they, they have mentioned see, this one so the uh, possibly right this may be an another options for investment purpose for you you want a funding source for this one right uh, because child health care demand would be double in the next decade the private sector has immense invested considerably in the health care industry over the past few years looking at the opportunity of loan made in listed public hospital looking at the report and capitalizing on expected growth rajakarna proposed launch an initial public offering by drh and enter the reserve board of the club stock exchange i see they try to get the fund through ipo so we have already look at about the test picks uh, so yeah a small point here so if you if they are intention to uh, listed uh, the reserve board so they, here we have to uh, focus on more on the governance aspect of the company you know so in the event of they are going to list it so those all the factors we have to uh, in an analysis we have to focus on. so is that right yeah yeah this at the moment board is not in balance no then uh, we have to take actions to uh, balance uh, that is one of the example is governance aspects board balance Yes, your point is correct. Actually, otherwise uh, it will not be practical because you have to adhere to these rules also, no? Yes, yes. We propose to raise five billion through an offer of subscriptions. 
Now look at look at accordingly the company would issue a new series of equity shares of 100 million, new one order shares of a company at 50 each. Uh, now, right, how much they want to get? Five billion through an offer for subscriptions. They're going to issue shares of 100 million. 100 million. That means. Uh, so total value is 5 billion, no? 100 million, 50, uh, 50 rupee each. Are any 5 billion below 100 million only? 50 any? Right. Now the share valuation may come into play here. Right. So share valuations. So what is the share valuation method they have used? Is it low value share? Is it low value share? Possible is a uh, right O value amount, no? I don't think that they will uh, issue share at a low uh, uh, value share price, right? So look at some of the share valuation method also. Even you can uh, do a calculations uh, based on the information available. Uh, it can be asset base, earning base, dividend base, cash flow base. So asset base uh, are normally it will give the lowest value for the uh, company shares, no? Asset base. Then uh, possibly this uh, cash flow basis will give the highest value. So possibly they may have used this uh, uh, cash flow basis valuations actually, right? Uh, right. Uh, within the unseen, they may have give, may give uh, more information about the cash flow about this particular uh, activity, right? Uh, this uh, hotel, uh, hospital one, new one they are going to establish. Then you can uh, calculate this, uh, right? Uh, share value whether it's uh, uh, good uh, good price or not right yeah uh, so, uh, so yeah a small point here so uh, at the beginning of this uh, restructure uh, from the previous uh, doctors to uh, the family owned they were considered the share at 1000 rupee now they for this investment they consider it as a 50 rupee so that means uh, they have they undervalued their share so or the share price has been fallen sort of indication now here uh so what would be then uh, the existing shareholders uh, value proposition uh, in that case if they lower this 50 rupees per share personally in initially they have mentioned about that part no so subsequently they may have issued shares to the, the already exited shareholders and the content the number of shares may be increased no so that information is silent otherwise practically yes. they will not issue shares at a very low cost no right yes. So possibly, you have, right, there may be some uh, unseen information actually. Uh, do some share valuations, right? So additionally, Raja Karna state that capital can be raised through a green bond this time. Uh, green bond again come into the scene, right? The idea was accepted by Raven, even though Olivia wished to continue without going public. Olivia explained that reason IPO had not performed well. That's true, no? because of this country uh, situations. And the IPO is not advisable. Rajakarna explained that the IPO can be launched in early 2023. Uh -huh. So maybe some information uh, uh, for you uh, in the unseen about the IPO. Oh, right, green bond, uh, so they make you information about green bond issuance also sometimes. The capital market will be attractive by that time and the month of January, generally booming month for the stock market. Furthermore, the healthcare sector has a positive sentiment compared to the other sectors and it is an advantage for DRH. Right. So possibly we'll think uh, they may go for IPO in 2023. Roland how we want to do a study of the hospital and after the consent of the board of director, he called the auditors of DRH Solan Company and their business concern company opportunity driven, driven business advisors private limited ODB for a special assignment. Ah, this may be the role they are going to give for you. So maybe a consultant of this particular organization. That will be the role of you for a special assignment. And the, this time Rajakarna proposed that the assignment should be handled by the largest firm in Sri Lanka as they have the capacity. ODB is one of the leading service firm with strong operating capa capabilities based in Columbia. It's focused on mid-level companies providing strategic planning, financial consulting, and professional services. Finally, at the request of Roland, the ODB team conducted due diligence they could see the DR, it was a fast growing hospital focused on pediatric, cardiology, orthopedics, uh, neurology, and uh, gynecology. Right. So, this 
so this is an interesting part so i feel that your role may be uh, one of the advisor in this particular consultancy firm i uh, see there is another guy is uh, right trying to enter into the scene singapore health giant a singapore based private health care provider hochi medicare group hmg approved drh for entering strategic partnership recently hrmg is willing to invest 10 billion for 10 year strategic partnership which is the first of its kind in sri lanka agil will part with drh to roll out innovative medical technologies realizing platform of clinical service advancement the partnership will enable drh to optimize clinical performance provide opportunities for more skilled local jobs enhance clinical education and further develop the hospital in the key clinical areas of cancer neuroscience and cardiovascular diseases right this is a strategic partnership we don't know what type of strategic partnership in this one right so there should be also given the uh, share ownership no right 10 billion they try to uh, invest here the strategic partnership enable the rs improve patient care as the care of our patient is uh, at the center of everything we do our partnership will accelerate the adoption of connected health thereby providing fast access to care while building uh, telehealth and predictive analytic capabilities at scale now see this they have big data some information predictive analytics see this one predictive analysis right so some of the new technologies uh, they are referring right capability at scale uh, for account data analytics uh, uh, is a uh, key here with regard to technological enhancement the uh, possibility be digitalized and network through end to end high quality techniques uh, and of imaging treatment modalities and informatics uh, informatics this will enable dr to consider in our possible service beside the new partnership with chimdi also in more construct a major extension block at drs to become a 500 bed hospital with which will create sb trainer new high skill jobs uh, 500 bed hospital no the integration of telemedicine technology provide improve access to care for local communities while offering a unique opportunity for extend the reach of medical tourism into pre and post surgical care albeit our objective is continuously for access and best of care demand for patients at ronan still ronan is in the business so these are another party uh, right who want to invest in this hospital so you can carefully look at about that party also there may be some information in the amsi then drh consultants uh, odb the odb team is to drh and verify the set of the hospital physically so that is your role possibly right the hospital has obtained building on lease and has improved from 20 to 100 bed uh, it was found that the bathroom in many location was severely undersized and required major work to meet market standard those are issues actually the bathroom had a complete lack of showers backup boilers were not available in case of failure of the main boilers so issues right air handling unit were old and required replacement roofing was in need for replacement in four of the older section of the facility there was no self monitored emergency fan for power generation equipment elevated dated back 15 years the certain part no longer will be indicated an event need for complete replacement low floor to ceiling height limit paid for mechanical electrical plumbing and it component installment portion of the building were not set for three phase power and would need a full replacement parking area support forms spelling and tracking concrete so these are issues actually right uh, they are highlighting due diligence analysis right uh, the total renovation cost for the facility was reportedly estimated 2 billion uh, see 2 billion is required for renovation purpose required dh to maintain the operating condition maximum revenue operate Uh, the hospital has a state of the art facility solid base mostly plastic uh, syringes uh, and packing of medicine are collected each day and then burn into an incinerator there may be some issue about uh, even this waste management early also we have found the same the odb team also saw that the management team lacked business education so because they changed the recruitment uh, policy no initially there were management trainees and then they stopped that policy and started to recruit people who have some other background like medicines right management team lacked business education and was more toward healthcare management expertise in their respective field i think that's a uh, one of the uh, mistake i think there should be some management uh, uh, background people also the team focused on drh financial reports along with cost control and internal procedures of procurement 
while the administrative and housekeeping staff comprise internal employees many key personnel including nurses technicians and doctors were hired and their remuneration was based on the revenue generation here is not in a strong liquidity position key point they are facing some liquidity problems and a cushion to survive is not sufficient to address i5 facility reinvestment we want 2 billion no not sufficient cash is available in the business therefore they have to go for ipo they have to sell part of the uh, uh, hospital right especially uh, that means the rights uh, uh, the share ownership should be uh, given to third party definitely uh, to some extent maybe at least uh, 49% share issues uh, especially given the projected net losses forecast for the hospital the hospital equity ratios are lower uh, like uh, should there may be issue with the cistern or inventory or no data receivable the industry benchmark does improve uh, implying that the management has to pay attention to managing the assets of 